So what, what's your, uh, what's your like end goal with this? You know, like you're creating your brand, you have your, uh, you know, you have your, uh, um, your podcast. Like, where do you plan on taking it? Um, like near future or like, you know, yeah, more out like, there. you know, whichever direction you feel yeah. like, you know, cause obviously it's kind of hard to plan like me. Like I have a five year plan with my business, Yeah. but like, I still have little goals in between, you know, breaking sure. fucking mm -hmm. 40 and 50 K a month. Yeah. I have like, you know, before, cause within five years, I want to be breaking a million in profit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then mm -hmm. I, eventually I want to sell my coaching program. Cause one thing that barbers don't have is a fucking business coach. That's why I do what I yeah. do because bro. <clears throat> yeah. That's actually what I want to do. Oh, like yeah, one yeah. of the topics, because oh, like, yeah. that's why I saw you on fucking social media. I, I don't know if somebody posted or I don't know, but it just popped up. And I'm like, that's pretty dope. And then the first thing I posted, like, bro, you're fucking full of shit. And you're like, simplify or something like that. I'm like, oh, this was a fucking Marine too. Oh, oh shit, yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. Badass. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so. This is all recording now, right? Yeah, it's recording cool, now. Let's do it. Yeah, so we'll, we'll go through barbering because. I mean, I guess that's like an icebreaker for both barbers and yep. veterans. And then I guess we'll talk about uh, <coughs> the veteran side after. All right, so so you just started popping up on my news feed. And a couple barbers that I follow also follow you. And I always see that they like your content. So what, like, inspired you to get into what you're doing? Or explain, so, like, your... So like I was saying before, yeah. you know, I, I, had a rough, I had a rough exit out of the Marines. I did a little time and, uh, you know, I put myself on house. Like I ended up being put on house arrest to the point to where I kind of, my options of like growth were limited. Yeah. I was, I, you could only do so much, you know, mm -hmm. like nobody wants to hire you. You have to find a job that, you know, you're in control of. You have to basically create your job at that point. That's where barbering came in. Yeah. I didn't know how to cut hair. It was like 2020, the begin, like the end of 2019, December, 2019, I got, you know, I had an ankle monitor on, yeah. and the judge was like, you're not leaving fucking 500 yards or like a hundred yards outside of your apartment. So I had to figure out what I was going to do. You know, I was like, dude, what in the world? And I just remember this one guy telling me, man, he was like, you're either going to be a barber or a janitor. And I was like, I remember like I was telling you, I fucking was pissed. I was like, you're not going to fucking tell me what I'm going to do. Blah, 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 so he, he struck a nerve with that. Yeah, man. He struck a did, fucking did nerve. Did you feel like, like degraded? In a sense, it, I, I don't like, I don't want to say it because now I'm a barber and I see what we actually do. Uh -huh. You know, before barbering, I just thought barbers cut hair. I yeah. was like a regular person mm -hmm. who watches social media and I was that dude that was like, bro, I'm not paying more than 15 bucks for a haircut. Yeah. So in my head, I didn't think of, I didn't think of barbers as like what we really are, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, I did feel like that was degrading. I'm like, yeah. you think I'm going to fucking sit behind yeah. a chair and cut fucking hair? Like, especially being a Marine for so many years yeah, and being a drill instructor, like the standard <clears throat> so fucking high. 10 and, years in the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. And the only barber I know is the PX. Uh -huh. I had one guy, Dave, who was like, he did eight years in the pen. Yeah. He was cutting my hair for <laughs> literally. Yeah. So, so my, my barber, he was my barber from like 2013 all the way to like literally now, man. Now, like I, I've obviously since barber school, I met other barbers, but he was the only barber I knew. I met him in Escondido. I was getting water mm -hmm. out of this little water spigot and he, he, he's got this tattoo on his face. He's this big Puerto Rican dude, man. Yeah. Like, swole as shit, bro. Like, fucking, he's, <laughs> he's big. Dave the Barber, man. If you guys ever, like, you look up Dave the Barber, you're going to find him. He's big as shit. He's from Escondido. Um, he was just like, hey, what are you doing? You know, I'm getting water. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, who's this guy? Yeah. He was like, you need a haircut? And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's fucking the weekend. And he was just like, well, come here. I got He worked at this barbershop called All Stars. Okay. It was up in Escondido. It's called All Stars. And, uh. Dude, he cut my hair one time and I fucking loved it. I was like, he gets the job done. Cool. That's yeah. all I knew about barbering was Dave, the PX, and then the fucking guys that cut the recruits. Yeah. You know? So when someone told me I was going to be a barber, that's all I thought was mm -hmm. like, dude, 10 years in the Marine Corps? Yeah. And you're telling me I'm going to be shaving people's fucking heads? Go well, fuck yourself, you know? <laughs> I, I didn't I did not, I didn't didn't even know what a fade was, bro. Yeah. I was just so used to either shaving my head or letting Dave, you know, fade me up and do the comb over. I was just cool you know like easy day if i decided to grow it out yeah but that's you know i i took that shit personal yeah i was <laughs> so all right so you said this is the end of 2019 beginning of 2020 when you yeah. got put on house arrest yeah so i mean that kind of worked out anyways because that year the whole world's fucking shut down yeah it, it was like it i was, was literally cutting from home and doing house calls in a hazmat suit that year <laughs> <laughs> now, i didn't take it to that extent 
had, I wasn't the barracks barber. I was the essential barber. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so like, it was like a whole marketing thing. I was like, fuck it. All these people were in hazmat suits and they'd be Yo, out. Essential. I'm going to fucking order me a hazmat suit and I'll fucking start doing house calls and shit. Dude, that's fucking smart. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a lot a lot of what people did. And for me, I was just like, fuck, man. You know, and, and this is like maybe two months before COVID because COVID popped off in like March or April of 2020. Yeah. And like, it was like, a, it was honestly, this was like a blessing in disguise mm -hmm. because, you know, I had nothing. My wife left me. I was in an apartment by myself. Um, I'm over here talking to my landlord about like, Hey, like, can you help me with rent? Is there any way you guys can just like, yeah. give me like some kind of like play with like, you know, paying half one month and then catching up the next or something, you know, and mm -hmm. my, thank God my landlords were cool. You know, they were yeah. just like, Hey, you know, You've been here for a while. You've always been on time. Like, we'll work with you. Whatever you need, we understand. They were so they were so dope that's, about that's, it. That's fucking awesome. You know, so having that kind of support right there yeah. was like, okay, now I got to fucking, you know, go 100% to yeah. make sure that this pays off. You know, people are helping me out. I have to find a way to pay them back. Yeah, you got to just shit out some money. Yeah. So <laughs> so I set up a white fold-out chair and a fucking lawn chair yeah. and a, or a, an ironing board and a white fold-out chair. Uh -huh. And I remember... Um, the first dude I cut, it was it was my buddy Larry. Okay. He's a he's a tow truck driver. Okay. So he tows cars in Escondido. And uh I was like, you know, um I was talking about I'm gonna start cutting hair and this and that. And uh one of my buddies came by to talk to me. And he was just like, So what's your plan? Like, what are you gonna do? What how are we gonna help you? You know, like yeah. um and uh I was like, dude, I'm gonna cut hair, like I just need people to practice with. Yeah. And just so happened, Larry was pulling up to the pad to pick up a car. And uh, he pulled up. He always comes over. And he was just like, hey, man, you want to cut my son? Yeah. So I was like, sure, dude. And I have a, I, I saved the picture. Was he a Marine like, too or no? No, 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 no. Okay. He's just a homie, man. So okay, I'm, okay. I'm in a car club. So, like, all oh, these guys, okay, like, okay, we yeah. all build low riders and stuff. So oh, Larry, he, like, um, he, you know, he delivers cars. He'll take cars to shows and stuff like that. Okay. He'll help us out. We help him out, you know, stuff like that. And um, he was like, hey, Lance, I'll bring my, I'll, I'll bring my, uh, uh, my son to you. Yeah. So he brought his like seven year old kid or whatever, you know, and uh, I would put him in the lawn chair and I took a towel, like a fucking shower towel, uh -huh. and I just draped it over him. I got a picture of it yeah. on, my, on my page. That's man. how it starts, uh, bro. Yeah. And that just, or trash bags. Yeah, dude. That was the one thing I would do once because I was like, dude, the lawn chair was like inconvenient. And that's when yeah. I was like, okay. I oh, yeah. Do I was it's like, the low. towel was like over the, all, all bunched up on him. It was just collecting hair. Yeah. So that's like the next cut I did after that was one of my homies that, uh, uh, he was a drill instructor with me. Okay. This dude, Valdez. Yeah. Uh, he stopped by. And okay. he lived up in Esco. And he was like, hey, man, like, I heard you're cutting hair. And I was like, yeah, bro, like, you trying to help out? Yeah. Sure, man. Hopped in. Uh, and I put cool. a trash bag over him and shit. Yeah. And I was like, here, I got a fold-out chair now <laughs> instead of the lawn chair, you yeah, know? Yeah. And then I was cutting in there, man. And eventually, like, you know, the ball started rolling. And I learned, like, dude, cutting hair, I'm not going to say it's not, it's not hard. It's not easy. But it's something that you can like pretty like grow at acceleratedly if like it you can have accelerated growth if you really lock in and focus yeah and just you know just sit behind the chair and learn and mm -hmm. like i didn't have much so what i would do is i would take my phone and i would turn on fucking uh youtube yeah and i would look up people like there's this one dude he actually follows me he goes by a uh, uh contour con okay um at, at concepts in uh i think it's out here in california Probably like LA or something. Uh, or yeah, but he's this, he's this uh, he's this Asian cat, and I would watch his videos, and it's cool now because he follows he me follows on Instagram. You? Yeah, yeah, he probably he, this is probably the first time. If if I'm gonna share this with him, I wanna yeah, as soon yeah. as this is out, I want him to see this. Yeah, but he was one of the first people I followed because what he would do is he would fade without guidelines. So like I was mm, watching his videos because yeah. when I started doing it, I was putting in like guidelines, and yeah. of course, dude, it looked like fucking steps up their head, yeah. you know. So I would follow his videos, I would play his videos, and I would just sit there and I would cut. So and, you fade without guidelines? Uh, now, no, I put in guidelines. Yeah. Now, now I put in guidelines. Okay. I literally just keep it simple. Open, yeah, uh -huh. you know, the no guard open, one, two, and then I just blend it all yeah, together. Yeah, for sure. Literally, uh, everyone does the fades. The whole process for a fade is the same exact thing. Yeah. People just use different steps to get there. Mm -hmm. A fade is always going to be the same thing. And that's yeah. one thing I learned. Like, yeah. there's a million ways to skin a cat. Mm -hmm. Now, like, what, what ended up happening was I started putting my shop together little by little. So I, I had a barber chair um i ended up getting a ring light 
And then I got rid of the ironing board because it was like a little ironing board holding all my shit. <laughs> that was your station? Yeah, dude. I, I, it, honestly, my station was a, my station for like a good like three months yeah. was a white fold-out chair, an ironing board, oh, yeah. and a fucking newer ring light. And I didn't know how to use ring lights. Like, I didn't understand. I just yeah. knew that I would always see barbers with them. Yeah. So, dude, my ring light, I would have it like fully extended, and I would just shine it above, like yeah. just down. Yeah. And I was like, dude, it just looks, I guess it gives me better lighting, you know? Like, yeah. I did not know how to use it. Uh-huh. So yeah, I looked ridiculous, bro. Like yeah. cutting with like a light hovering over me like a halo. <laughs> I had fucking like I would like open my legs all the way so I could like kind of yeah, squat yeah, down. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because if I was bent over, my fucking back. Yeah. Would hurt. I still do that shit, bro. So I'm like big. yeah. <laughs> so I like spread out like that, and I would just like cut, dude. And I yeah. just you know just little by little I started piecing it together. Eventually, like I learned how to use the light. Mm. I bought a real barber chair off uh, off eBay. Yeah. Um. One of the homies, they hooked me up with it. Um, they were like, hey, we're going to help you out. Um, you know, they uh, uh, came through and they paid for half the chair. Got oh, me the nice. chair. Yeah. And then um, the, the workstation. Just over time because then COVID happened. You know, COVID yeah. started coming together. So, like, in two months, I started getting it down pretty quickly. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's just because, like, um, it was something that I was just, for me, I feel like I was just so focused on. Dude, I would because of the, the the circumstances you were in, you were yeah, forced like, to just fucking it was just go all it was, in, yeah. Dude. So like, dude, people would walk by it. I couldn't really leave my pad far. Yeah. So what I would do is I would sit outside, and we have like, uh, Esco has like a lot of homeless people. Mm. Dude, I would whistle at them and shit. And I'm like, hey, what are you doing? And they look over. What the fuck? Hey, come here real quick. <laughs> dude, I would give them like five or six bucks. I'm like, hey man, I'll, I'll give you some money if you let me cut your hair, dude. And wow. you know, I was married. My wife left me, but. Under the sink, she left all of her fucking hair products and shit. Oh. So what I would do is I would shampoo all their fucking hair in my bathroom. Yeah? Yeah, dude. I would take them to my bathroom, and I had one of those, like, the head would come off. Dude, and I would fucking give them a full-on fucking shower, dry their hair, and then I'd sit them in the chair. And I would – this is what I would do for every single one of them, bro. Because, like, I didn't know how to style hair or anything. Mm -hmm. Everybody would get a number three on top in a medium skin fade okay. and a lineup, bro. Yeah. They all look like fucking cholos. Everybody, like – they all had the fucking like just the crispy lineup. They yeah. had a three on top <laughs> and a bald fade. Everybody. That's like all I knew how to do was a medium fade. Bro. Like nobody got anything different because that's all I knew, bro. Like fucking I would everybody got a medium a low fade, medium fade. They yeah. want a high fade, medium fade. Everyone got like a fuck because that's all I you know, like that's all I would see in all these videos. Yeah. So I was just fucking mimicking the videos and like I was like, okay, cool. Now I gotta learn how to like, you know, obviously do other fades. Uh -huh. But at the time, I was like, dude, I'm just going to focus on one thing. And that's all I did for like three months. I just focused on skin fades. That was it. Yeah. Skin fades uh -huh. and lineups. And it was it was, it was was funny, man. Like, just like you, you probably experienced it, like going through trial and error. Like, oh, for sure. I mean, with, with this shit, it's all trial and error. Yeah. The like, I, I remember like zero gapping tools when I learned about that shit. Yeah. Bro, motherfuckers are walking around with red lines on their forehead. <laughs> Or just cut Bro, because like, I didn't fucking know. I was like, I would test it on my boy. No, that's that's happened to me for the sure. Marines would come through at the back and they they'd message me like, hey look, man, like the back of my neck, and they sent a picture in the mirror, and they would have like red fucking bites <laughs> all over it. I was like, fuck, dude. So back to fucking YouTube. Like yeah. I literally taught myself everything off YouTube. Yeah. And I was like, dude, like I'm gonna figure this shit out. And then um, you know, little by little it started coming together, and then COVID happened. Yeah. Dude, when COVID happened, like, it was, like, I, you know, like most small businesses, it was a blessing in disguise. Mm -hmm. Barber shops closed, and people didn't, dude, I would get messages on Facebook, because I would always tell people, hey, I'm cutting hair. Yeah. I would get messages on Facebook, and it was funny, dude. I would watch people argue in comments, like, uh, Escondido Friends was one of them. Okay. It'd be like, hey, who's cutting hair? Like, I haven't had a haircut in, like, you know, like, four weeks. Mm -hmm. Like, everything shut down. I just need a haircut. And then you would have people, they were like, are you serious? Like, COVID's out there right now. Like, COVID, yeah. you know, you're going to spread COVID by going to a barbershop. Yeah. Like, bro, that was the perfect time to build up a fucking clientele. Because there was so many barbers, at least I'm from Jersey. So, like, yeah. New York City was, like, the worst. Oh, so you were time. out there during COVID? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, nobody was cutting except for me, you know? So, though, I fucking grew my clientele. Like, I, like, tripled that shit during <clears throat> fucking COVID. Damn. See, I didn't like I didn't like like I said, I didn't have a clientele. I just yeah. got one during yeah. COVID, you know? And, and and it was cool because like even if the cut sucked, yeah, they knew like hey, he still cuts, like I'm uh -huh. coming back. Yeah. So I just would learn their heads, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I took a lot from it. I know a lot of people were like capitalizing on, you know, like barbers were like, Oh, it's gonna be a hundred dollars a haircut. Yeah. Or like they were charging up the ass to do like haircuts and stuff like that. But for a newer barber, 
dude, all I seen that was was his practice in money. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Even yeah. if it was fucking, because I was charging like five bucks a cut. Yeah, dude, five bucks a cut. Yeah. I was, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, and then you hear like I was watching YouTube, and you would the one thing. Oh, we'll get into this later. But you would always hear barbers saying like. All these new barbers want to charge fucking forty, fifty dollars a cut coming out of barber school, like well. Oh, mm. So that's how I was like gauging my prices. I'm like, well, dude, I don't have a barber's license. Mm -hmm. I never cut hair before. Like, dude, give me five bucks, I'll cut your hair. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I would just practice, 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 yeah. and just literally, I knew that that all I was gonna do was fades because a lot of it was military. Mm -hmm. So all Marines needed is a fucking haircut every Sunday, and it was funny because um, the the Marines on base were told. They still had to get haircuts during COVID. Like they were told they still had to get cuts. So I would get Marines hitting me up. Like, and it was funny. Like I'd have older recruits. Hey, staff sergeant, are you cutting? I was like, bitch, I'm not, I'm just fucking lucky. I'm Lance. Like, you don't call me by my regular name. Yeah. Like, and like, hey, staff sergeant, like, can I get a haircut? Like they're telling us like, we still need haircuts every fucking Sunday. Like, but even if we have to shave our heads and I don't want to shave my head. Like, All right, cool. So that's why I would get my practice in, you know? So like my weekends would be booked the fuck up. How, how was that like? Your fucking former recruits hitting you up for a haircut. Dude, it was funny, man. Like That's was, like a weird, that, that's a crazy dynamic right there. So, so me, like one thing about me was like, I never took like the whole drill instructor thing, like to where I was like, oh yeah, this is a fucking bitch ass. Like, you know, they, they become Marines and you know, drill instructors have like these like walls they put up. Yeah, for sure. Or like whatever. Like, I'm not saying I was like a fucking recruit lover, but I'm always just me. Okay. I looked at the Marine Corps as like, like being a drill instructor. I just looked at it as like. You're a low paid actor. These kids come to become United States Marines. Yeah. You know, you're supposed to train them. Like, and yeah, I had my fucking ways of doing it. Did, yeah. Pain retains. <laughs> of course. Like, you know, you don't want to fucking like, you don't want to train. Like, hey, yeah. we'll fucking instill some pain. We'll, we'll get, I'll give you the option. Yeah. We can either drill or we can fucking go to the fucking pit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. but, but, uh, I never really fucking like had to like change character. Yeah. So I was just like, like, you know, the recruits didn't want to train. I would just be good. Like, fuck you. You guys want to say fuck me? Fuck you. And I would fucking execute whatever I had to do to get them back on track. Yeah. You know, like, I never, like, played, like, the fucking, I'm a staff sergeant. You're not going to talk to me role. So when they would hit me up on social media, they'd be like, hey, staff sergeant, like, so I heard you cutting hair. And I'm like, hey, what's up, man? Like, how's everything going? And they're like, uh, you know, they're kind of, like, caught off guard when they yeah. would come see me no, and shit yeah, like yeah. that. But for the most part, they were just like, you know, they're Marines. Yeah. I didn't really see him any differently. Like, yeah. the recruit is still a fucking person. Like, yeah, it's mm -hmm. like when in the training environment, yeah, you're a dumb bitch. Yeah, <laughs> like I hate your guts. You, you because, can turn it off. Yeah, because because you, I'm you're the reason why I'm waking up at three in the morning mm -hmm. to work the last two hours of fire watch and then stay up all day and run fucking PT yeah. drill, fucking slay you, take you to class, feed you, watch you eat while I'm not eating, fucking do all this fucking bullshit with you, tuck you in at night, and then fucking work goddamn fire watch because you idiots, like, didn't do something, you know? So, yeah. like, that's where the hate came from. But reality, I didn't give a fuck, dude. I was like, I hate this shit just as much as you guys. Like, okay. I'm a fucking low-paid actor. Like, I don't act like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, okay, I'm yeah. not going to fucking I see go. what you mean by low-paid actor. Yeah, like, I don't. I'm, I don't, you know, I'm not a fucking mean, I'm not a tough fucking person. Yeah. I, I'm not, you know, I would, they would even ask me, what's your MOS? I was, I'm a fucking cook. You know, yeah. I was, I was aviation, but I would just tell them I'm a fucking cook. <laughs> like, what the fuck's the matter? I'm going to fucking beat your ass. I'm going to fucking, I'm going to whack your ass. <laughs> matter fucking, what you I know do, what I'm saying? Like, you know, it don't fucking matter whether I'm a fucking cook or a recon marine. Like, you're going to be on the floor of that crying, bro. Like, that's, that's it, man. Like, your pockets are going to be emptied all day, bro. Like, no matter what, like, you're about to get fucking ran up, bro. Like, but, but that's, you know, the way I seen it was I didn't yeah. really, you know, I, I love the job. But I didn't let it like create my personality. So like I didn't let it define me. Like I feel like that's where a lot of Marines fucking lose like their identity. For they, sure. They don't know how to create their own. They don't have their own personality. You know they yeah. they leave the Marine Corps and they f like still have. I'm a fucking sergeant major. Mm -hmm. I'm a gunnery sergeant. I'm yeah. a fucking. Bro, you're in fucking Walgreens, stand in line like everybody else. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I feel like I, I had that issue, even though I was in the reserve. Yeah. Like, I didn't know how to fucking, if I should be myself, or I should fucking be, you know, a fucking sergeant or whatever. Like, I was always confused about that shit, because it, you get you get drilled about how to be as a fucking yeah. Marine, but at the same time, you got to be yourself as well. And you, you came in you right out of high school. You got to be human. Yeah, you came in right out of high school, right? 
like a year after. Yeah, so so you gotta think, man. Like most Marines join at a young age, between yeah. mm-hmm. seventeen to like twenty three. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So they don't have an identity, even. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. For so sure. that's all they know. It's like mm-hmm. when someone goes to jail, and that's all they know. When they yeah. come out of prison, that's 100%. how you turn. You know, yeah. you see this person on fucking Instagram doing fucking burpees and shit, all fucking blasted up, still wearing fucking pro clubs and long socks. I'm yeah. like. Hey, fool, this ain't a level four yard. Yeah. Like, you're a normal person. Mm-hmm. It's no different than the Marines. Like, yeah. bro, you're not back at Camp Pendleton. You're mm-hmm. not a fucking staff sergeant in the Marines. You're not a fucking gunnery sergeant. You're not, like, be yourself. Mm-hmm. Create your own identity. And for me, like, I had a good balance of that. Because even though I was in the Marine Corps, I had a lot of friends who were civilians out here in California. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, as soon as 1600, bro, I'm lucky. I'm yeah. Lance. I'm yeah. Mendoza. I'm not Staff Sergeant Mendoza. I'm not fucking... You know, drill instructor, staff sergeant, whatever. I'm not staff and COIC of whatever warehouse or Dude, logistics. I, that's what I tell some of my clients that are that are about to get out or whatever. Yeah. You know, they ask you questions or whatever. I'll be like, yo, just fucking be yourself. Yeah, and that and, and it and it's hard because even though you tell them to be themselves, they don't even know who they are. Yeah. They don't have any hobbies. No, not you know at what I'm saying? They're so stuck. Their in life the is Corps. the fucking Marine Corps. They get they got fitness, they got the gym, yeah, maybe like sports, mm-hmm. but other than that. All they know is fucking show up to information at 07 yeah, and, and that's hope that God dropped by 1630, you know? Yeah. Because then afterward, what do you do? You go home, you go to the gym, come back home, get your stuff ready for the next day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like most Marines, even on the weekends, what do they do? They go drink. They go party. Yeah. They don't really have anything yeah. that, you know, defines them. They don't have like a hobby or like some kind of like experience outside. So I feel like that for me. It was, it was, it benefited me that I wasn't that type of person. Mm -hmm. You know, I was who I was all the way through. I just wore the rank and I played my part because really as a Marine, like the one, the one thing I looked at the Marine Corps was, it was like, to me, the Marine Corps was like the best, like mentorship program out there. Mm -hmm. The Marine Corps was like the best. And that's all the, like, if you look at the Marine Corps, that's and you take away from that and you apply it to anything in the real world Bro. you're going to be not just a leader yeah, well, but a mentor God. yeah you know what sure, i'm saying because dude. you look at things from such a different perspective mm-hmm. you know you're not just um you know you're not just like a business owner you look at your fucking workers and you want them to be successful because not because oh they it's your it's your job but you look at them differently you're like that's a direct reflection of me so if they suck it's because i suck you know yeah. what I'm saying? You're like, okay, if these guys aren't doing good, it's not their fault they're not doing good. It's because I'm not doing good. Yeah. So what do you do? You start trying to help them. You start mm-hmm. trying to lead them. You start trying to mentor them. You try and teach them the ways that helped you to become where you were. Yeah. To get them and elevate all their skills, their knowledge, and their you know their uh, uh, production. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's it's a. It's like being in a mentorship program. The Marine Corps will develop you to be probably like the like the best mentor, the best version of yourself that you can be towards others. Yeah. And I don't feel like many people take from that. You know, I don't feel like a lot of people take from that. A lot of people see the Marine Corps and they're like, oh, I'm an authoritative figure. You know, mm-hmm. I was X, Y, and Z in the Marines. Yeah. Now you should listen to me. Yeah. No, bro, that's not how it works. Nobody fucking cares that you were a drill instructor. Nobody cares that you were mm-hmm. a fucking recon Marine. Nobody cares yeah. that you were a McQuist. Yeah. Nobody cares that you did all this stuff. What can you do for people now? How can you correlate? Yeah. You know, the leadership traits that you had in the Marine Corps and put them in the civilian world and help people better themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to self-development, because, you know, the one thing I'll say about business that I'm learning, the best business comes from the best people who have the best self-development skills. If you look at these people who are successful, their businesses are successful, but they can mentor people because they're able to, they've developed them skills themselves. They understand how to work under, you know, under pressure. They understand mm-hmm. problem solving. They understand <clears throat> teaching. They understand like, um, you know, basically mentorship. They understand leadership and they understand like how to handle stress. They know when to take these breaks. Mm-hmm. They know when to focus. They know how to, you know, organize their schedule and they know how to implement tools to lead them to success. And it's like, it's, it's like they're able to do that and teach others because They've been able to master that themselves. Yeah. When you can take that and teach others, your business is gonna thrive. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like the best, like the best mm-hmm. people that, like the most successful people, mm-hmm. they're, you know, they started with their self, and then that trickled into everything that they did. Yeah. You know, and that's how I feel like is going on with what I'm doing. You know, 
I was able to fucking pull myself out of a situation. I was able to fucking work on myself. I was able to, you know, rate, like improve my skills, learn as much as I could scale my business to like the max potential it could go. And in one year, dude, one and a half years in that same kitchen where I had a white fold out chair and an yeah. ironing board, that same kitchen in 2021, the end of 2021, I was charging. No, no, no. 20. Yeah. It was 2022. I think it was about one or one and a half years. I went from charging $5 a haircut. To sixty dollars a cut, seventy five dollar haircut and beard. Yeah, bro. and I was booked, bro. Yeah, that was the difference. You know, mm -hmm. I was still bringing in new clients. I was able to scale my business, but not just with the clients before. I was able to scale my business and keep bringing people in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And keep my fucking business flowing. Like, mm -hmm. dude, in fucking two years of just cutting hair, just learning how to cut hair. Yeah, and then you know, taking all my skills I learned in two years. I was breaking 14, 15 K a month yeah. in a fucking kitchen in Escondido, 36 miles outside of San Diego. Yeah. And there's people out there who were like, oh, fucking, you know, they were like, how's a barber charging you that much? Blah, 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 this and that. Dude, I just fucking blocked that shit out, focused on me and my clients, dude. And I just watched my business fucking like thrive, you know? Yeah. So like, that's where like, you know, all this came from. I look at it from like what we did in the Marines. Mm -hmm. A lot of the Marines who were successful, bro. They're good leaders. They're good mentors. And they set a good example because they live that way. They don't just talk it. And you've probably seen that. You've probably seen shitty leaders who are like, they make you, they slave, they slay the fuck out of you. Keep you there early. Keep mm -hmm. you there. Bring yeah. you in early. Keep you there late. They talk to you about, they talk to you about how the old core was. You don't fucking bitch about shit. But then you know that they go home and they fucking drink a fucking six pack, smoke a fucking box of Newports. Yeah. They come to work smelling like a fucking hangover and shit. And it's like, that's a shitty leader because they're not even developed themselves. So how are you going to teach me something? Mm -hmm. You know, and you've probably seen that. It's crazy because, like, like listening to your story, we almost like our timelines are very similar. Because so from 2000, 2017, me and my wife, we both served. Uh, we split up. I ended up homeless, right? Oh shit! And this was like. Right after the core, she's been out for a year. I've been out for, no, she's been out for like two years. I've been out for a year or whatever. And then, you know, we're getting <laughs> divorced, all this shit. And then two months later, um, we, you know, decided to like work on things. And we, we both ended up homeless in California with my son. He was yeah. four years old, right? So we were in Anaheim and then we had nothing, no support from our family, no nothing. And we moved to Jersey, end of 2017, lost everything. My family took us in, right? So from being in Jersey, it was like a like a time where we could like mentally heal, because like we were just like going through our own mental shit, you know. Fuck yeah, you know you 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 can relate. No, that's what. That's, yeah, I'm imagining fuck, like yeah. holy fuck. Dude. And we drove all across the country, and uh, I remember my son. Uh, we used to live in like hotels in Anaheim. Like every other night, it was like a different hotel. And if you ask my son today, what's your favorite part of vacation? You say the hotels. But he doesn't even know that story. He probably thought it was his family trip. Yeah, he thought he was on vacation. So <laughs> we're in Jersey. Oh, man. Um, you know, my family took us in. We started in the basement where fucking my other son was born. They were asleep on a bunk bed, just uh, our bed, a TV, and that's it. You know, and then summer of 2021, you know, those three years we built up our finances, our credit, all this shit. And then she accepted a job over here at Wounded Warrior okay, in okay. San Diego. Okay. So we drove back across the country. At Pendleton? Um, Balboa. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Back across the country here with the thought, like, this shit could happen again. But we have no time to, like, make excuses. We got to just fucking hit the ground running. Yeah. So then I started at Ambitious summer 2021. And with all that motivation that fucking with everything that happened with us being homeless to fucking um covid and the essential war all that shit i'm like i know how to build my business because of all this hard shit i've been through and in one year i started making fucking like 100k figure numbers as a barber yeah and the same thing you know you're talking about like it could get done for like all your all the students that are that are gonna watch this, all your students, like that shit can get done in the fucking year. You just yeah. gotta be on top of it. You gotta fucking grind and you gotta plan 
and organize your shit and have like a vision. Like you know? a roadmap. Yeah, you, you got to have a roadmap. Yep. And then my goal from when I got here was like in two years, I'm going to be out of this shop and I have my own studio. Two years later, like almost right on the dot, fucking, we're here we got are. Got your own studio. Yeah. And then Jeez. not only that, but last year, January, that's when I decided like, all right, my clientele is pretty booked up right now. I'm going to start working on my social media. One year working on my social media, I fucking blew up my, I blew up my I, social so, media. I so blew up I all that you, shit, dude. I seen you before you you hit me up on Instagram. Okay. Because I, I would see you at the Ambitious Edge. I would see your stuff in my Explorer. Okay. And I would see the Barracks Barber. And like, for me, like for a while, I kind of like veered away from anything military related. For sure. I just like, you know, I just yeah. kept away from it. Mm -hmm. But I remember seeing your stuff and I was laughing because yeah. I was like... <laughs> I oh yeah I sent you the picture I sent you the picture that I have in front of the ambition oh, yeah, 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 yeah. because that January I showed up there and I, I remember when I was cutting up my apartment dude like I told you yeah. my growth was like it was really accelerated so there was people who like knew me and they were like dude this dude came up like super fast mm -hmm. and then there's people who like fucking had no idea who the fuck I was you yeah. know what I'm saying they were just like what the fuck like who are who is this guy and the the owner of ambitious edge super cool dude Hits me up, and um, there was this other guy, Jay, who introduced me to him. Okay. Um, he was a Marine as well. And he was a, hey, man, I, wa I want to just introduce you to somebody. He's got a barbershop up in uh, San Clemente, and, and it's, uh, it's a, you know, a nice-ass shop. And he was remodeling, and he was putting the lights up around, like the neon lights okay, and shit. Okay, okay, yeah. He put in new barber chairs. He mm -hmm. had the wall done and everything. Yeah. It was that January, like 2022, I think. Okay. And um, that's when I went there and I took that picture because I was like, dude, I'm going to cut hair here. Yeah. And then, man, I remember um, at the time, this is when I was, I was, I was dating my, uh, my son's mom. You know, we're, we're, um, we're still together. Yeah. I, um, but she kind of told me, she was like, she was like, you're going to get into a barber shop with a big name she goes you are cutting in a apartment she was like you already made a name for yourself she was like you're bringing in clients like dude i was bringing in freaking people who were like olympian bodybuilders i had mm -hmm. fucking nfl football players oh, i yeah. cut pedro gonzalez from the texas rangers they just okay. won the, the uh the world series yeah I had that i was cutting him mm. um you know she was like do you she was like i know this shop has a big name and i know you know this is this is like a pretty big shop she was like i don't want you to risk your identity of your own self mm -hmm. and just be in a barber shop yeah she was like you know if you work in a shop she was like do you think it's gonna and she put it in my head you know and i was just like damn dude like maybe i shouldn't be in a shop maybe i should just keep doing my own thing because yeah. back then i was like you gotta bet on yourself you dude. know yeah so so i stuck with it i was like you know what and i just stayed in my apartment mm -hmm. and then about like a month it was a couple it was later i think it was like a month later i ended up down in a shop in uh san diego okay i ended up in a shop in san diego in mission beach and um things just didn't work out yeah i was in there um there were some cool guys it was like three dudes that owned it and um <clears throat> like i just you know i was still doing my marketing i was doing my promoting <clears throat> but the one thing i will say about a barber shop i say it's good for new barbers to get into build up a clientele but it's not if you already have like an established yeah, business yeah it's hard to mesh the ethics of your business mm -hmm. with another business and essentially that's what you're doing when you yeah. rent booth mm -hmm. like when you when you have booth rent that barbershop doesn't own you you're renting your spot yeah so this little box right here that's lucky's cuts barbershop you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like this is my business yeah now anything that's around it can affect my business yeah you know what i'm saying and that's kind of when i learned like you know what like i have my own set of standards they have their own set of standards uh i'm gonna take my business back up to escondido the opportunity was cool things didn't align and i felt better back up in esco mm -hmm. and again dude i built up my business while i was there i was able to keep bringing in clients i was able to scale um you know learn practice my client acquisition skills like Around 2022 is when I kind of started seeing barbering as a game. I started seeing barbering as like, okay, I have an established clientele. I already know how to market. I already know how to run paid ads. I know how to bring people into my chair. Um, as long as I do five haircuts a day, that's 300 bucks at $60 a cut. Yeah. And then a haircut and beard is 75. So that's just extra. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So what I would do is I would play a game. I would be like, okay, cool. Like I already have five haircuts for like the week set up every day. Let's try and get like 10 for like, you know, Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah. So then I would just practice different like acquisition techniques. 
and I would just get on social media and I would like learn. And that's really how I scaled my business. That's like how I scaled it past that hundred, you know, breaking like 150 K because I was looking at it like, okay, you know, if you want to play big, you got to invest big. Yeah. And that's when I started seeing the business side of things. And it was no longer just about the haircuts. As long as you stay consistent and quality, like in, in the quality is there, dude, you have a good fucking running business. As long as you're delivering consistently on time with quality, bro, that's what clients want. If you know your clients, you learn your clients, just like learning your Marines. Mm-hmm. You learn your clients, you understand them. Yeah. You're always going to fucking, you know, take care of them. Mm-hmm. You're always looking out for the best interest of them. You're mm-hmm. keeping them on point. Yeah. They're going to keep coming back. So yeah. stay consistent with it. Now, what can I do to get more people? You know yeah. what I'm saying? How can I put myself yeah. in front of more people? That, that's, that's where I'm at right now. Um, th- so I've been building up the bricks. Yeah, and kind of had to been had to ignore the barracks barber. Yeah, so I'm building up this. Mm-hmm. So now my next challenge, since I've noticed like my patterns and all that, yeah, I need to bring that back up. You know, bring up the barracks barber back up to okay, bring okay, in new okay. clients. Okay. Um, what is like a strategy that you have, bro? There's a million of yeah. them, dude. Like, like it's a, there's a million ways to skin a cat, and I remember I would always talk to older barbers. And yeah. this is where I was like, this is what would piss me off about older barbers. They always would tell you, oh, you have, you don't have your feet wet in the game. Yeah. What makes you think you can charge fucking $50 a cut and you've only been cutting for like two years? I've been cutting for 10 years. I'm charging 50 bucks a cut. You know, it takes time. And I would look at him and I would think like, so what did you do to get to where you were at? I was in the shop early. Mm-hmm. I opened up and then I, I would, you know, fit everybody who walked in. I would take in all, you know, all squeeze-ins. I would fucking stay there till closing. I would even cut after closing. I wouldn't take weekends. And I was just like, what the fuck for like 10 years? And they're oh, but I'm booked up. But I'm booked up. I'm booked up two weeks. It takes two weeks to book me up. Yeah. And in my head, I would be like, okay, I don't want to spend. That's so much. Yeah, I would would, kind of tell them like, so you're basically overworked (laughs) and underpaid. Because if you've been in this industry for 10 years and you're only charging 50 bucks a cut, yeah you're fucking like burning yourself out you're overworked and you're underpaid people are valuing you for your price yeah and not so much your quality anymore mm-hmm. so i was like dude fuck that i'm not gonna fucking play this game like all these bar like who who the fuck is this guy to tell me i have to wait to grow my business yeah fuck you dude like yeah. i'm gonna fucking pass you like, like yeah. i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do this in double i'm gonna do double in, in half the time yeah you know what i'm saying so what I did was I learned how to put myself in front of the clients that I wanted to cut. So I only do fade tapers and lineups. Mm-hmm. I do have those clients who want like a two on the side and a little off the top. Yeah. But I tell them like in my eyes, I can't even market that. So yeah, I'm making the money. I'm making a quick, you know, that's like a short term like satisfaction of like, you know, 60 bucks for a haircut. But I can't market with that. I can't promote that. Who wants to see that on a story? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If I cut an attorney yeah. and he's fucking some like, 40 year old white dude with like a fucking just a flat side and a little off the top. Like, dude, I can't really market that. You know, you yeah, can, no. but that's not the, that's not who I want in my chair. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So what I started doing was I was like, dude, I would look up on social media. I would use social media like a motherfucker, dude. I would like go to gyms. I would go to pages that had gyms, like local gyms. So I used to, bro, that's funny. I used to do the and same I would, exact, and I would but, and go go through whoever just recently posted and yep. then DM those people. Yes, but check this out. You have to know how to get their attention. Yeah. So what you have to do is you have to like find a page. So um I have this uh um I have this little like fucking it's like a little tool. And what I do is I I, I go to about like ten to fifteen people a day and do it. Because okay. if you do 20 people or more, you're going to get marked as spam. Okay. So, so, oh, right. so I would, because dude, I've had my fucking Instagram, like to where I couldn't even comment on people's yeah, shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, Cause yeah. I did, it, I reached out to so many people. So what I would do is I would go to gyms, I would go to bars, I would go to clubs and I would find people in the San Diego area that had the haircuts that I would cut. Okay. And what I would do, cause if you just DM them, dude, you might just go into like the requests and they're never going to see yeah. it. Yeah. So what I would do is I would play a game, dude. I would comment on all their shit. Mm. I would follow them. So like if they were like a gym goer, dude, yeah. I would comment on a couple of their posts. I'd be like, dude, congrats on the PR. Damn, that's heavy ass weight. Mm. Or like if they were a bodybuilder, yeah. bro, 
Bodybuilders okay, okay. love their fucking ego stroke. Oh. Who doesn't want to be told that your fucking <laughs> shoulders are fucking jacked? You know, you know, like I, I fucking so, would For myself. sure, when I when so, I hit you up, like you swole so you were like, God damn, bro, I'm so, so when you hit me up, I was like, I was like, he probably has done this before. I was like, he, I was, I was, I kind of fucking knew you were trying to get my attention or something because that's a hundred percent. And then right I after that, I hit you up with the like, yo, let's collab because that's how it fucking works. Yeah, you yeah, give him a little ego stroke for sure, and then you like a bunch of their photos you let them you show them because yeah, what happens yeah, yeah. when they go on the gram they see the notifications they click on it uh, but then they're just gonna see lucky cut it lucky cut it lucky cut it lucky yeah, cut it yeah, no, and then they're yeah, gonna okay. see the blue lucky cut it followed you okay and then they're gonna see the comments comments and they're like oh fuck dude like yeah what the fuck and then they're gonna see the message bro yeah when they open yeah. up the message it yeah. would be like hey bro i saw you yeah. local to the san diego yeah. area you know and then at the end of the message i would be like congrats on that i would make it like personal so it didn't sound like such a tailored yeah. like a cut and paste message uh-huh bro yeah. I would do that to dog. Yeah. I would wake up at eight in the morning yeah. and I would send out 10 yeah. and then at noon I would do like another five dog. and like, bro, <laughs> I would watch. And, and the thing is like numbers, bro. Yeah. If you do like, dude, that's fucking like 600 people a fucking month. Yeah, bro. This is so crazy. Cause like back when 2017, before we ended up moving all that shit, I was working right here in uh, Laguna, <clears throat> Laguna Hills at V's barbershop. Okay. And I would do the same exact shit. I would DM like, like 30 people a week and i'll be like fucking hey you want a free haircut and i'll blah 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 and tailor the message all this oh, shit, shit blah 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 so i'll just start first starting off but i don't know why i just fucking completely so, forgot about dude that so, so what i so what i oh, did man was that's fucking and genius it's, it's like what i teach my students man i turned my page i made my page nothing but haircuts yeah so like i remember i used to make fun of drill instructors for using social media because okay. like, dude, I fucking hated it, bro. I would see fucking them, bitch. They would take like a fucking selfie, and I'd be like, "Oh, fucking feeling cute." Then I see later, oh, bitch, like, what the fuck is this? Like, oh, you fucking their chucks like, and shit, bro. I'm like, oh my god, with, with their knife hand. Right so there, like, bro. yeah, I was like, bro, you look fucking tough, Nuggets, dog. You look tough. Like you're gonna get a lot of likes on that. How about you go fucking like train like train some fucking Marines, bro? Like. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> this is a fucking head, not a fucking photo shoot. Like, get the fuck. And I hated it, bro. Like, I fucking, I would use social media and I would post, like, you know, graduation photos. Like, yeah. I would fucking post photos of, like, when I graduated from a quiz, you know? Yeah. Like, dude, I was proud of being a Marine. I yeah. fucking loved it. But it was those guys who were like, oh, my God, dude. Like, there was some, there was some dudes who would, like, go above and beyond. And I'm just like, dog, like. This is cringy as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I didn't like social media. It, it, it's funny, dog. One of my recruits fucking called me out on facebook uh last week dog so 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 the, so this this one kid i used to call him baby ryu okay. uh he was like this little fucking asian cat man yeah and, but this motherfucker could like he was just like sh dude could do like 25 pull-ups oh no he way. could do like 25 pull-ups he could fucking like run fucking like 17 minute three miles like oh, he was just a fucking little bad motherfucker dog yeah like, this is a bad little motherfucker <laughs> and uh he had a twin brother man he's a power lifter bro oh. and now he like shoots it like a range and shit and mm. um he was posting like a video of him like shooting on the range yeah and one of these other recruits commented and was like uh because the dude who posted the marine the the you know baby ryu he posted and was just like damn ammo's expensive you know, and then just has a fucking video of him just dumping fucking rounds, you know? <laughs> and uh, this other Marine, he comments, and he was like, you should be an influencer. They'll give you free money. He was like, you should be a, a social media influencer. They'll probably, like, you know, sponsor you with free rounds. Yeah. And then underneath, he commented again. He was like, yeah, Mendoza's an influencer now. Like, you know, and I oh, see it. Oh, oh, I like, oh, oh, I, fucking, oh, I was oh, like, oh, I, I comment. I was like, really, bitch? <laughs> I was like, you know, I li I was like, really, bitch? I was like, I was fucking influencing before social media. I was, you know, I, I was like, you smart ass mother. And, you know, he commented back. He was like, no. He goes, he was like, no, I was giving you a compliment. I, I was like, no, Baxter. I know what the fuck you were doing, bitch. Like, and then, of course, the other Marine, he was like, oh, he's just mad that you it the shit out of him. And blah, this and that. But, dude, it was funny as fuck. But they called me out like that. And yeah. I'm just like. But it's, it, I was, you know, I was kind of proud because I was like, yeah. hell yeah, like, call yeah. these motherfuckers out. You uh, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you should be on top of motherfuckers. Yeah. Like, that's how it was supposed to be. But he was like, yeah, Mendoza's an influence. I was like, I'm just fucking Mendoza, huh, bitch? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> but yeah, man, I seen that. And I was like, you fuck. I was like, really, bitch? All right. All right. But, uh, but yeah, dude, I, I hated social media like that. And then, you know, here I am fucking. 
yeah. making fucking videos, uh -huh. and content, and like. But I, I made my whole social media just all haircuts. Yeah. Because when I would message those people, mm -hmm. what they would do is they would go to my page. And and, bro, that was my portfolio. Yeah. yeah so yeah, that was exactly. my way. That was mm -hmm. like I stopped passing out cards, bro. Yeah. I was like, there's no more passing out cards because when you scale your business, mm -hmm. if I were to go up to somebody in Starbucks, you know, and I see them in line, and I'm just like, hey, bro, if you ever need a cut, I'm a barber, tap in, and I give them a card. What do they always ask? How much is a cut? Mm. Bro, I'm, one, I'm, I don't give discounts. I don't yeah. give a fuck. Like, yeah. I do not give discounts. And it's funny because I see breeds, they, like, you'll see, like, these barber shops, they give, like, military discounts. Yeah. Bitch, they get a discount at Foot Locker. They get a discount how, at how Applebee's. How much you charge the breeds? They get 60 bucks. What oh, do you mean? Okay. I don't give a military. All right. I know you get free medical. <laughs> I know you get free dental. <laughs> Bro, you know what? I, I, saw, I, I went on your, your, your booking. You got like two or three options, right? That's it. Three options. I got I got four options. You get a haircut, haircut and beard and yeah. beard. That's it. Yeah. So I'm a, for military oh, you active and veterans, I do forty five. But like I'm at that like that I cut I'm the fucking barracks barber. Fuck that. Yeah, I'm the barracks barber, <laughs> but I'm I'm a fucking taxi bitch. I used to live in the barracks too. I know that every fucking Friday you're spending hundred and fifty to three hundred bucks buying fucking alcohol for bitches you ain't taking home. Yeah, like you're taking sure. your fucking yeah. Tinder date out. You know what I'm saying? Like you're getting fucked do, up. Do you cut up a good amount of uh active duty guys? Yeah, dude. So I have Joe Shuckers come in, I have fucking like Marines come in, like right. I have I'm actually cutting my old um uh he was a, a a company. He was in the company. Um, Gonzo Smith, uh, Gonzalo Smith. He comes in town every time he comes in town, man. He takes care of me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like okay. I cut him for his wedding and shit. Yeah. I cut all the Marines that were in his wedding. Yeah. Like um, you know, because it's a valued service. When yeah. you you know, like again, like I said, it all goes back to the service you provide. Yeah. In the business that you stand on, mm -hmm. you know, because like I at for, I used to do that. Too. I was like, oh, military cuts, like yeah. dude. It, it popped up in my feed like three years ago. It showed my first service list. Bro, I had like haircut, haircut and beard, eyebrows, fucking nose waxing. I that had fucking annoying, black bro. facial. Fuck I had fucking that. like hot towel. Like, yeah. all, I was like, bro, this shit looks like I'm fucking ordering off a fucking Chinese food yeah, menu. Yeah, it's too much. You dude. open it up and uh -huh. it's like a whole fucking yeah, like, dude. like, god damn, bro. It's funny because the, the dudes that I used to cut with that ambitious, I'll tell them the same thing, bro. Keep that shit fucking simple, dude. Yeah, make it the convenience wins. Yeah. Bro. So, so that's a thing for the Marines, man. Like, they know they're getting a fresh cut. They know they're always going to be on point. Like, and again, like, a lot of Marines use social media. And, like, now I look at it like it's a normal thing. Yeah. Like, it's not a bad thing to use social media. Like, dude, for the most part, when Marines post, it's motivating as shit. I love mm -hmm. fucking seeing it yeah. because there's no such thing. Like, I, I, I see it like the, the, the things that go viral are all positive. Yeah. You'll never see, like, yeah, you'll see, like, crazy shit. Like, that one gunnery sergeant who, like, you know, fucked up in, in that, like, you know, kind of pressured that he, a recruit died in training because he committed suicide. And the mm -hmm. gunny was in the paper for that shit back in, like, 20, like, 16. Okay. Um, it was, like, bad publicity. But that was that. Yeah. You will never see Marines post something where they show their ass. Because they know they're going to get fucked up. They know they're going to get tore up when they go back to, you, you know what I'm saying? Regs? What's that? You follow not in regs? Well, I mean, that guy's sharing everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That guy's putting people on blast. But when I see it, like, am I, am I explorer? Dude, you see Marines getting promoted. You see Marines fucking outside the flight line, like, working on the FATs. Okay. You see fucking drill instructors doing fucking drill instructor shit. Yeah. Like, I'm not against it anymore. I think it's, like, a positive thing. Mm -hmm. I look at it like, dude, you guys are putting a positive image for the Marine Corps out there. And I always love the Corps. Yeah. I know I got the fucking boot and shit. Yeah. But, again, that's an accountability issue. Yeah. I fucked up. You yeah. do something you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. You pay the fucking price. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'll always have love for the Marine Corps because... Dude, it, it, it helped guide me with yeah. my with my uh you know with my structure, mm -hmm. you know, and I appreciate it. I had a lot of good leaders, mm -hmm. and it was dope because like even when I was cutting in my kitchen, like in that white foldout chair, dude, I had my company first sergeant there. This ah. dude, first sergeant Coburn, yeah. he would come every Friday, bro, and yeah. he lived out here in like San Clemente. Mm. He would drive to fucking Escondido and get his hair cut. Yeah, I had my my uh, my J and my senior, bro. These dudes, Fernandez and and uh, Alvarado. Bro, they were there getting haircuts every fucking Friday. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that was like the camaraderie that we built. That was a brotherhood and that was a support system that kept me going. Because, dude, once I got out the Marines, I was like, oh, fuck. Like, I'm on my own. Yeah. But those Marines made me feel like I still had someone in my corner. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I had this dude, Valdez. And on the way here, he texted me. Yeah. And it, it was a picture, bro. And it said, it was, it was two Marines. And it was like, you know... Take as many photos with you can as you can because one day, you know, oh you'll regret God. not having them. 
And me, him, and Alvarado have this. And I sent him this picture. Yeah. And it was me, him, and Alvarado with our fucking arms crossed. Yeah. When I was leaving the depot because I still had my cover ceremony. Yeah. Okay. So I still ranked my ribbon. I still got all my fucking, you know, I lost my benefits. Yeah. But I still got my fucking DI ribbon. That's one thing I fucking keep with me. Bro. Hell like, yeah. I fucking keep that shit in my fucking, uh, in my pad. Yeah. So everywhere, every time I see, you know, I got rid of all my awards, but I still had that little fucking ribbon because that's how much it meant to me. Yeah. And the brotherhood that fucking came with it. Mm -hmm. Because those guys, bro, like, like that dude, Gonzalo Smith, mm -hmm. he's a, he's an officer. I think he's like a, a, a captain or a major now, oh. but, um, dude, he's coming on Wednesday to get a haircut. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he's yeah. traveling across the country. Yeah. And the first thing he does is, Hey, look, like, can I get a cut? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like uh -huh. that, you can't fucking like get that mm -hmm. shit anywhere else. The Marine Corps, that brotherhood is there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's, 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 it's something I'm grateful for. Yeah. You know? But it's it, it's dope, man. But as far as fucking discounts, fuck yourself. <laughs> like fucking empty your fucking pockets, bitch. Like right we're, now, yeah, bro. we're gonna do fucking pockets on me again. Empty your fucking wallet, bro. Like you get a discount at Foot Locker, Applebee's, Denny's. You get the fucking Veterans Day. You get the Marine Corps birthday. Like hey, you come to Lucky's Country, you pay full price, dog. Yeah. Like you ain't got a tip. Well, uh, <laughs> why do they call you Lucky? Oh shit! Man. What's the what's the story so, behind that? Nickname? So so that came like long ago, man. So I built lowrider. I, I'm in a lowrider club, and like okay, I got okay. my own thing going on out there. Yeah. So I've been in accidents, bro. I've okay. been in fucking. It's a whole lucky to be alive situation. I've been oh. fucking like. Uh, I've been like fucking stabbed in the armpit. I've been fucking yeah? like yeah, dude. I, in I, the Marine Corps. Yeah, while I was in the Marines. You got stabbed in the armpit. Yeah, so I got stabbed in the armpit. Like in a bar and fight? Fucking what? It was out. It was some bullshit out there. Okay. Um, I fucking I've been through a lot, man. Okay. So that's where the name Lucky came okay. from. Okay. Bro, I was in a fucking even when I was like a barber, bro. I was in a fucking motorcycle accident. Oh. And I was cutting hair in a fucking. Uh, I was sitting in a stool, and I was cutting hair because like I would like what I would do is I post up like a stool behind me. Okay. And I would sit in it. And okay. I had a cast on, and I would just cut people's hair. Okay. Okay. So I was in a motorcycle accident, and this lady fucking ran me over, bro. And she fucking snapped my oh, shin. Oh Jesus. Yeah. So my oh. Achilles ripped off. My fucking ankle split. The, no bone, the bone came out through here. Jeez, how when was that? This was in 2021, February 2021. Oh, so like you know, right when like I, you know my business. So this is when, okay, like a year after you started cutting hair. Yeah, so I was a barber. So like I was you know still cutting from my pad, and um, what I had to do was I, I saved these pictures, bro. So like fucking, I would uh, I would sit in a stool, and I had a I had like a little fucking uh like a. Like a little rest underneath me, and I put my fucking broken foot on it, and I would cut people's hair. <clears throat> okay. And like I had this fucking look at how much I I I when I was in the accident, dude, I wasn't taking care of myself. I didn't have nobody there. You know, I was living on my own, so I got down to like 140. Yeah, pounds. I was gonna say you look a lot smaller. Yeah, man. I was like 140 pounds, bro, because I wasn't drinking water, I wasn't eating. I like yeah. I would spend like the whole day on the couch if I wasn't Oof. cutting. Yeah. But eventually, I worked through it, you know, got better and and um, just made shit work, you know. But that's where the name Lucky comes from. Lucky, mm. to, you know, yeah, lucky to be alive. Oh, so, nice. <laughs> so, so yeah, man. I just you know ran with that shit, and, you know, made my whole fucking Lucky the Barber thing. And I was like, fuck. So it. you cut hair at Harley Davidson? Now I do. Yeah. Is that how you kind of got in there? So yeah. So um, after you know, I like in in twenty, it was twenty twenty two. Like towards the um, like, I want to say f February twenty twenty two. I cut in that I cut in that shop from like February to like April. Yeah. In the beginning of April, I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna you know bounce. I'm gonna go back to my apartment." So then I stayed in my apartment from April, like the end of April, all the way till about January of twenty twenty three. Yeah. And in twenty twenty three, I got a message on Instagram. So like, dude, I would get messages from like all kinds of people. Like, dude, I had the fucking game. Like, here I saved this message. Yeah. Fucking yeah, bro. I was like, what the fuck? Like, I would get the people game to, hit you up. Yeah. So I would get, yeah, check this out. <laughs> so I was like, what the fuck? Dude? No, it's so dope cutting hair. I cut up this master chef over the summer. So yeah, he messages me and he's just like, what's good? You know, like, so I'm sending him pictures of my fucking haircuts. Like, bro, get in my fucking chair. It was good. And dude. I, yeah, so I was like, what the fuck? Like, how did this guy, you know, and I was, like, reaching out to him, yeah, trying to yeah, fucking yeah. get him in my chair. Yeah. But it was cool to have him, like, hit me up, and I open it up, you know, and it's fucking the rapper of the game. I'm like, yeah. dude, that's fucking dope. Point, point to the camera. Oh, the the message? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, like, it, it was cool to have that, you know, like, have people, like, reaching out to me. Yeah. And um, I got one message from uh, um, San Diego Harley Davidson. Okay. Um, oh. So also oh, they hit you up. Yeah. So they oh. had what? What they did was they had a barber inside the dealership, 
Okay. And uh, she was there for years, bro. But like, mm. she didn't have any clientele. It was just one of those like, basically they had an extra room. Like okay. it was like this little like room, and like it was like a barber shop and a tattoo shop. But like, nobody really was able to run a business out of it. I don't okay. think they knew how to market or like it was kind of like people who did haircuts are like super cuts, you know? Okay. Like a, a girl worked like there. a one chair thing. Yeah, it was like a one chair, and then like she would only do like. When when I when I talked to the guy there, he was like, dude, she's only doing like maybe one or two haircuts a week. No way. So I was like, what? And then I found out, dude, the dealerships all over the country, bro, they have like spots for barbers, bro. But nobody knows how to like run their own studio. Um yeah, for sure. For that, so, you need your own clientele. For exactly. That. So yeah. that's where like the like the disconnect was was these mm. people that were putting in there, they didn't really understand the barbershop like business side of it. They knew how to cut. Or like they knew how to like basically do like a basic haircut, but they didn't really know how to market, promote, and capitalize on the own studio. Yeah. So when I heard that, I, I ride Harleys, bro. Yeah. I'm a fucking my, okay. parent, my mom, my dad, my brother, like my whole family, we all grew up riding Harleys. Oh, Everybody rides. Yeah. Like my dad was fucking he oh, was in an a, accident. That's a sick ass spot then. Yeah, so so I was like, get the fuck out of here. And yeah. this dude, man, Josh Card, he was the GM. He came from Florida, he took over Harley Davidson, he fucking Bro, he fucking had that place lit. Yeah. Like, every weekend he would have events. Like, this dude was, like, the master of networking. Mm. I don't know how. Dude, this guy came from Florida, landed in San Diego Harley-Davidson, and with, like, fucking, like, a month of him being there, he knew everybody. Like, he had connects with, like, painters. He had the connects with, like, fucking San Diego uh, Customs. Wow. He had, like, bro, this dude was, re like, he would just, I don't know what it was, man, but this dude was one of those people, like, he's a visionary, man. Like, yeah. He had like a vision for Harley. He was like, I'm going to fucking turn this place into like something that's popping. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to bring this place back to life. And he did, man. And yeah. then I got a message and it was a DM. <clears throat> it said, you know, they were looking for a barber shop. And I think what it was, was their page or their explore page or something, dude. I just clicked like on it. And I was like, this is dope. You know, because the page has like 50,000 San Diego Harley Davidson. Their page has like 50,000 followers. So I was just like, dude, this is dope. Like some barber is going to fucking win it. Like, you know, like that's fucking sick. And people were commenting and there was no barbers. Everyone was just like, oh, like I want to get my hair cut at Harley. And people were just like, dude, that'd be dope. Harley Davidson with a barber. And I'm just like, yeah, what the fuck? Like, why is nobody hopping on this? Dude, I got a fucking DM. And this guy was like, hey, man, would you want to cut at Harley Davidson? And I'm like, there's no way. Like, what yeah. the fuck? So I called him and, you know, we talked and he was just like, hey, come down to Harley and check it out. So I went down there and it was like, dude, it, literally they didn't even have ring lights in the shop. It was like a fucking garage door. You lift it up. Yeah. There was an old ass barber chair. They had a dude. They even did the plumbing for a sink. Oh. Like they have like a whole sink in there. Yeah. They had. Little, Is it bigger than this? It's literally the same size. Oh. It's the same fucking size. Like I have my Harley parked inside of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I have my oh, rotor. Let me see. Sick. I got fucking. Let me see. I got a. Uh, uh, I'll show you what the shop looks like right here. Um. Fucking. I went down there and I was like, dude, I can own this spot. He was like, you'll take it. He was like, do whatever you want with it. Bro, I went in there. I painted it black. I put my fucking Harley inside. <clears throat> fucking what? That's yeah. badass. Right there on the fucking showroom floor. Bro, We I see this all, is awesome. all the new bikes. As soon as they come in, I get to go watch them fucking get unloaded. Yo, that's, that's really nice, dude. Holy shit. They let me fucking, and you got your fucking bike in there. Bro, they dude, let me that's a badass setup, dude. Yeah. They let me do like, you know, they let me fucking work my own wow. business. And you That's know, so cool. I kept I kept it professional. Yeah. I ran it how I ran out of my apartment. Yeah. You know, I, I my clients all like fucking respect the spot. Everyone comes through. It's just like another business inside of San Diego Harley Davidson. Yeah. And the guys there, dude, it's it's beneficial for everybody because now the guys, the sales guys, they don't have to fucking drive out and go get haircuts. Yeah. They got a barbershop right inside. Mm -hmm. They stay fresh, looking clean yeah, in front of the clients yeah. every day. You know what I'm saying? And and they got like, you know, obviously I see all the new bikes when they come in. Mm -hmm. I get to see all the trade-ins. I get to see yeah. all the cool, like, there's guys that bring like custom bikes in or whatever like that. Okay. Like whenever yeah. they get a bike done, they'll bring it in and show it off. They'll put it on display there. So mm. like, dude, it's like fucking the best of both worlds. I get to fucking cut hair and hang out around fucking Harleys all day. I yeah. get to drive my Harley into my own fucking shop. Yeah. Like, it, how <laughs> the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Living the dream, it dog. It is all just from fucking networking. Yeah. All just from networking. So, yeah, that guy opened the door for me, and I ran with it, man. And they fucking let me do it. Like, those videos I make, mm -hmm. bro, Harley Davidson, they're just like, yeah, go ahead. Make your videos. Bro, I open up whenever I want. I yeah. open it up. 
go in there, set up all the lights and shit, make my videos, and it draws a tra it draws attraction. People walk in, and oh, there's a barber shop in here, and then there's another guy next to me who does tattoos. Mm. This guy, the tattoo store. If you guys are looking for a tattoo in San Diego, hit up the tattoo store. Uh, Chris a Chris Akers, fucking badass tattoo artist. I have to give him a shout out, man. He's my yeah. fucking. He's like the fucking partner in crime. We got our barber shop and then the That's fucking sick. tattoo shop. Hell yeah. So I definitely got to give Chris his fucking credit, man. He's killing it down there. San Diego Harley Davidson. <laughs> so so he's got his shit set up. Yeah. And um, dude, we just fucking we got tattoos, haircuts, and fucking Harley. Oh, dog. That's it's, fucking. Yeah, it's fucking sick, dude. And you know, like. It's it's all just from social media. Yeah. You know, the way I created my page was strictly business. It was strictly fucking haircuts. There was no fucking like, oh, because that's what most barbers fuck up with. They start fucking mixing their personal life mm -hmm. and then their business life. And yeah. then nobody gives a fuck that they were drinking mimosas on a Sunday. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they're posting that shit up. So, yeah. like, I would just keep it strictly barbering. And that's literally what created this fucking, like, you know, I want to say network. Because people just knew me as a barber. That's it. They yeah. just know you for what you are, mm -hmm. you know, for your business. And now fucking San Diego Harley Davidson. I've been there since uh, March, February of 2023. So I'll be coming up on my on a full year there. Nice. It's a it's a fucking badass spot, man. I got fucking AC in there and yeah. shit. I got a fucking little ceiling fan and stuff. They let me mount my ring lights. I painted everything black in there. Like, yeah. dude, it's fucking dope. They take care of me. So oh, yeah. it, it's it's a sick ass spot. Fuck yeah. And now I'm like, dude, like that's kind of what led me into coaching. Fuck yeah. So. What, what, what are your goals for coaching? So with coaching, I one thing I want to do is get rid of this fucking old school, outdated barber mentality. I want to help barbers like understand that you can grow at an accelerated rate as long as you lock in and focus. Because I see it as me being able to give back to the person I was two years ago. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. be the person mm -hmm. yeah. you wanted you know, be the person you needed when you were going through the tough times you were going through. Yeah. I feel like I can do that with barbers because of the systems of acquisition, the systems of data analytics tracking, the way that I was able to take barbering and stop looking through the lens of a barber yeah. and look through the lens of a business. Mm -hmm. Because when you start focusing in and locking in, dude, you can make some serious fucking changes that are like positive in your business in a short amount of time. There should be no reason why barbers are fucking behind the chair for 10 years with nothing to show for it, without a cushion, yeah. without fucking any kind of like, you know, future investments. You know what I'm saying? Like barbers tend to fucking cut for all these years and they got the fucking Louis fucking, the Louis Vuitton mm -hmm. fucking satchel or whatever you call yeah. it, a fanny pack. Mm -hmm. They got the fucking gold. Like, dude, I fucking bought, oh my God, <laughs> stupid as shit. But, but like you buy dumb shit yeah. because you see all this money and you think you have it and then you start overspending and you're like, okay, I made 300 bucks today so I can at least spend it and make it back the next day. No, motherfucker, you're just spending money you don't, you don't have. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're not creating a cushion for yourself. So I want to help barbers develop that and I want to help, you know, basically give back to the industry the way it gave to me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like there's so much free information out there. There's so much free knowledge out there, but there's not knowledge on running a business there's not a structure there's not an actual like system that's going to develop these barbers into being success without them thinking that they have to wait to be in the game 10 11 12 years you know what i'm saying you can fucking shorten that time period gain so much knowledge and grow and for me like dude within the next five years like i want to take this coaching and i want to kind of prove myself with it because a lot of these big industries like fucking uh babylis andy's Stylecraft, Wall, they yeah. all have educators and academies, right? And a lot of those educators, a lot of those like academies that they run, what do they teach you? How to cut hair, how to section hair, how to fucking part hair, how to do a fade, yeah. how to do a taper, how to control fucking beard growth, how to fucking, but they don't teach you how to scale a business. I want to take my coaching, I want to scale it, to where I'm coaching thousands of students. Dude, if I can make Marines, I can fucking make a barber. Yeah. If I can fucking, yeah. if in 13 weeks I can turn a fucking <laughs> a, a, a civilian into a United States Marine and change the way he walks, talks, stands, looks, and fucking like the parents see him and they're like, dude, this is a whole transformation. Yeah. How the fuck can I take this fucking 18, 19 year old kid and turn him into a fucking $100,000 business? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Out of a fucking That's kitchen. Yeah. I fucking did it. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. 
Let me fucking show you the way, yeah, bro. For sure. Let's get you fucking going because you're mm -hmm. 18, 19, 20 years old. Let me put you in a position that's going to fucking make you think that, oh, dude, this guy was 30 doing this. I'm fucking 20. I can only imagine where I'm going to be at when I'm his age. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want, like, like the way I see it, their success is my success, just like yeah. in the Marine Corps. Yeah. The more successful they are, the more successful so, I am. So quick. All right. So you for sure have a passion. When you were a drone instructor, you were super passionate about creating Marines. I would say not creating Marines, but like, you know, Transform yeah, like them. mentoring, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. create, yeah, we'll say that. Create so like, like now yeah. that you were taken away from that, you, you're putting that same energy into creating Farmers. life. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you get a lot of fulfillment from that. Dude. Yes. Because the way I see uh, it is like, so dope. is, is bro. Like <clears throat> the money is always going to be there. Yeah. The money is always going to be there. Yeah. But the one thing that can't replace money is your fucking reputation. Yeah. I said this in my last video. You can always rebuild a business, but you can't rebuild your reputation. Yeah. And one thing I always take pride in is being that guy that helped the others. Yeah. I always love being that person that helped others because, dude, their success is my success. And the way I see it is the more successful these barbers are, the more successful my program is. Yeah. Because I know it's going to fucking win. Now, if these barbers suck, that means I fucking suck. Yeah. I don't fucking suck. So I'm not going to let them suck. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I kind of put the pressure on myself with them and with guiding them in the right direction because dude like okay cool they join the program they become successful but then they continuously grow they take what i learned what they learned from me and then what do they do they go get another mentor they get someone to take them somewhere to that next level and then the next level and then the next level mm -hmm. but what do you never forget the person who helped you from the beginning yeah. the person who was like there and that's where it's like dude like congrats yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to be looking up to them like, yeah. fuck yeah, dude, you fucking did it. Mm -hmm. I remember when you had no fucking, like, when you had no direction yeah. and I was able to help you. Yeah. That's my fucking money in the bank. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. my fucking, like, dude, this motherfucker took that and won. Yeah. You know, if he outgrows me, that's what's supposed to happen. Yeah. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, most barbershop owners, I know, like, well, I'm not going to say most, but from, like, the barbershop owners that I've seen, a lot of barbershops, they implement these rules where, like, you can't interact with the clients and get their personal phone numbers. Mm -hmm. You can't take them when you leave the shop. You can't trade personal information <laughs> or social medias. Bro, you're limiting that barber's growth. Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? You Bro. have them literally feeding out of your hand. Mm -hmm. You're the fucking watering hole for them. You're not mm -hmm. develop developing them into a business. You're keeping them as a barber, yeah. but you're not training them to be on their own. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I want to let barbers know like you can fucking do it, dude. Yeah. Like this is how to fucking do it. This is how to fucking feed yourself, and this is how to pull yourself out of these situations because I felt like I needed that when I was in my shoes. Yeah. And the guy that helped me fucking sold solar panels, bro. Yeah. The dude that helped me yeah. sold fucking solar panels. He fucking sat in my chair and was like, dude, you look at everything as a barber and not as a business. And that's when I started telling him about – because he asked me, he said, how do you reach new clients? And I told him my, you know, my theory, and I, I told him like, yeah, I, you know, I messaged like five people. I messaged like six people a day. And then he kind of told me, he was like, so you reach out to like five or six people a day? I was like, yeah. He was like, you know how many fucking doors I was knocking on when I was fucking, you know, like going house to house trying to install? I was like, yeah. what do you mean? He was like, well, when I first did, I was doing like five or six people. I would get like 10 people, 20 people, 30 people. He was like, dude, to get one sale, I knew it was going to take, he was like, I did the math. He was like, to get three sales, I knew each week I had to reach 200 people. He goes, I had to hit 200 people each week just to get 10 people to sit down with me. And out of those 10 people, only two people would sign. Mm. He was like, your numbers are fucking shit. Mm. He was like, your fucking math is trash. No way. That's where that barber yeah. math video comes from. Okay, okay. Because he was like, your fucking math is fucking trash, bro. And, you know, being out of the Marines, having yeah. somebody that wasn't a Marine call me trash. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I was looking at my shears like, I'm going to put him in his fucking neck. You know, like, <laughs> you're not going to sit in my chair and tell me I fucking suck. Yeah. But I was listening to him, you know. Yeah. I was just like, I was like. So what? Like, I'm not, I'm not doing enough? He's like, fuck no, dude. He's like, if you want to make real money, you're not going to do it charging fucking 30 bucks a haircut. Yeah. He was like, that's fucking not how it goes, bro. He's like, you think fucking $30 an hour is a lot? Yeah. He was like, fucking five years from now, $30 an hour is going to be the new 15. And yeah. look at us right now. $20 an hour is yeah, the new 15. Yeah, dude, for sure. So the motherfucker was like, you know, he had that vision. And mm -hmm. he was just like, hey, man, like, let's start doing this. Yeah. He was like, I want you to look at your content. I want you to look at your data. I want you to look at your numbers. And he kind of put me on game to numbers, dude. Yeah. And that's how I built my business was off numbers. So now I want to teach barbers this shit, dude. Yeah. I want to fucking see barbers do the same so thing I did. How many people would you recommend to DM each week? 
bro. I because there there is a cap on it before you get marked as spam, right? Yeah, since like 20, 20 people and you get marked as spam, twenty five people like, in a day or in a week. In a day. Okay. So like you don't want to go over like twenty five or thirty people. Okay. I mean like me, like even one of my students, dude, he recently just did it. Did it, uh, Adolfo? He's a uh, Fable the Barber, another fucking barber. Yeah. yeah look out for Fable the Barber. That's a dude right there. He's yeah. in uh, uh he's in uh, Glendora. Um, he was he was dude. This guy commented on so many posts. He, he was like, bro, like, this motherfucker was like a robot. Like, you tell him to do something, he'll fucking do it. Yeah. And he's, his business is growing really well right now. Yeah. His business, he's actually looking for a studio to get into. He's only mm. been cutting for like two years now. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I, I, I swear, I shit you not, this person was reaching out to at least like 100 people. And then they fucking Instagram blocked him from even liking fucking photos. Yeah. <laughs> he couldn't comment. Mm -hmm. He messaged me like, for three weeks, he had, like, no access to, like, be... Like, he could get on Instagram, yeah. but he could not engage with nobody. Yeah. Like, they froze his engagement. So, mm -hmm. I would say maybe, like, 15, 18 people a day. Yeah. You know? And at least, like, fucking, like, that's, like, 500 to, like, 550 a, a month. You okay. know what I'm saying? Because, dude, like, yeah, that's a one way to do it. But you got to think word of mouth is always going to win. Yeah. So, even if you do get four new people a week, dude, that's still four new people that are going to walk out with your haircut and tell people about you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, dude, and do even, that in the course of a year. That's, fuck, that's dude, crazy. In a year, yeah, bro, you're looking at fucking like, oh shit, yeah. what's like six hundred times twelve? That's you know, like that's three thousand six hundred or what? That thirty six, fuck, something like that. Yeah, some crazy ass fucking number. It's, it's crazy. Um, so before we moved back to Jersey, <clears throat> uh, the page of bricks, it that was a barber repost page uh -huh. back in the day. It was called the Inglorious Barbers. So if you go through my tagged pictures on that page, it's nothing but haircuts that people used to tag me in. Okay. So with that page, um, that was back when you just post a dope picture and get hella likes. The yeah. algorithm was different. Yeah. So I was straight out of barber school. And with that, I used it to promote barber competitions out here in Southern California. Okay. And then I threw my own barber competition. It was like May of 2017 on Memorial Day. And like I donated some of the funds to like this... Um, this fundraiser or whatever called Save the Brave. Okay, okay. It was like to help veterans with PTSD and all this shit. Yeah, I've heard of it. And um, yeah. So with that page, I used to DM people, local barbers from all over Southern California, and to promote it. So I had like the whole the flyers. I used to like their pictures. I had a custom message, and I DM like nine hundred to a thousand local barbers. And it, over the four, course of like four months, and then when the the event came, like. Four to five hundred people showed up to that shit. Fuck. Dude. Yeah, bro. And then my staff sergeant, um, he used to run a what's it called Toys for Tots. Yeah. At my unit, so he had to connect for like the S three or whatever to get like seven tons and shit. So I had seven tons parked outside this fucking event with Marines just like fucking st pulled like just fucking dude, posted up fuck? and shit. <laughs> Looking at all the barber competition, bro. dog. Fuck. But then everything that happened with fucking me and my wife split up and all this shit. So can we I, pause this? I can use a bathroom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> who? This guy? The, the dude who cuts here? He cuts right here. Oh, he cuts. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. I, okay so <laughs> That's my station. station. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I was, okay, I thought he was a Marine, too. I was like, okay. No. Uh, yeah, this is my station, and yeah. And my boy, Danny. Oh, he used to work at Ambitious, too. Okay, okay. Did you did you when you um when you went to Ambitious to like check it out? Was it like during the day and shit? No, it was at night. Okay. Everything was like closed. Like he was like putting up the lights. Like it was just me, the owner, because he had like kind of long hair. I think he was like yeah, yeah. Native American, right? He looks Native American, but he's not. He's just Mexican. Oh shit! Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he looks Native American. Yeah, that's what I thought dude. he was. Yeah, <clears throat> he, he looks like uh, Jason Momoa a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is Roland, right? Yeah, this is Roland. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what we were talking about. Talking about when you did the event at the uh, the hangar, oh, or yeah, at, yeah. on the base, yeah, with the, uh, with the Humvees. Yeah, and shit it like was that. um, it was in Anaheim the event. Okay, okay. But, yeah, um, but yeah, fucking, and a bunch of people showed up and shit, and that's that was like my introduction to barbering and like social media, and this is like straight out of barber school. So like so networking and shit. Yeah, like fucking just on that shit, man. And um, I grew that page from zero to like a hundred and. It was like 150, 2,000, like straight out of barber school, like God in a couple damn, months. Dude, fuck. But the algorithm was way different back then. And um, then after a while, when me and my wife had that split up and we moved to Jersey, I kind of just like 
let me not fucking focus on this. I got other shit to fucking worry about. But let me just have this page, keep it in my back pocket just in case I ever want to use it. And then now I'm using it for this. Oh, shit. Yeah. Dude, that's dope. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, like that like, DM strategy fucking works. Yeah, it, it works. Yeah, dude, it, it fucking works a lot. And it's funny, dude, because I remember like when you talk about like growing the page, mm -hmm. one thing that like I kind of tell barbers, don't focus on fucking your social media followers, man. That means nothing if yeah. you don't know how to use it to convert your, you know, the followers into clients. Yeah. If you don't know how to convert into clients, you're going to have a page with like 30,000 followers. And you're fucking not mm -hmm. gonna have a scaling yeah. business. Like mm -hmm. I've seen so many barbers do that where they're like great content creators, they have like a great engagement, and then I go to their like booking link and it's like thirty five dollars a cut. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, no. Oh, like what are you doing? Like, yeah, you have to know how to play numbers in your favor. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm not saying just because you have a big page you can charge high prices because again that's not how it works. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you can be really good at business and have a small it's, following. It's two different things. Like there's this like the um. There's this guy who um, I used to watch on YouTube a lot when it came to like business, and I use this platform. It's School.com. Okay. Uh, Alex Harmozy, he just like invested. Oh, it. the dude with the uh, he has like longer hair. With, yeah, with a he's beard. all like jacked. And yeah, shit, yeah, that and, guy. Like, yeah. Fucking. So I like his content. Um, he's a fucking badass guy. Like to watch his stuff. But there was this dude that he uh, bought School.com. I don't know if he bought it from, but like he invested into it. Mm. And his name's Sam Ovens. Okay. Sam Ovens is like a fucking logical genius. Like he just uses everything that's practical to like win. And like the guy's like a fucking millionaire. You know what I'm saying? Like a hundred uh, millionaire. Yeah. And like he's hundreds of millions of dollars in his business. And he's only got like, you know, like 99,000 followers. I'm not saying that's not a lot, but like you would think like where Alex Harmozy has like a hundred million followers. You know what I'm saying? Or like yeah. millions of followers. You see these people that have like all these, like this giant following. Like Sam Ovens, he doesn't have like a giant following. He's not, he only has. If you go to his page, he only has like three photos on his Instagram. Yeah. It's, it, it doesn't, cor I never will correlate success with followers. Yeah. And I tell my barbers, like, don't let us discourage you just because you can't have like, dude, I was charging 60 bucks a cut, 75 haircut and beard, breaking fucking twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a month. And mm -hmm. I only had 3,000 followers. Yeah. I had 3,600 followers. It wasn't until I did this coaching thing. Today, I reached 10,000 followers. Hell yeah. Bro, your Today, page is blowing up, dude. Exactly. But the thing is, it's because. Now I'm making it more value based. Yeah. Before I was just promoting haircuts and I just used my page as a portfolio. Yeah. I would constantly post cuts. I would post like what people would want to see. Just like, you know, something to gain their attention. Mm -hmm. So like fucking like cutting hair, showing them like what like, you know, balding somebody out, showing them like fucking like the steps to mm -hmm. a fade. Yeah. And then the final product of the fucking haircut, yeah. making it look all fucking nice and mm -hmm. fancy and shit. And that's how all my videos went. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have a big following, but when I would reach out to people, they would see my page. They would just see the book now button and they would click it. Mm -hmm. And that's how I knew like, okay, cool. Engagement is going to get them into a client. Mm -hmm. Dude, 3000 followers and fucking like 1500 of them are clients. That's winning. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like 30,000 followers and you've got like fucking 50 clients a month. That's not right. Yeah. You know, but something's wrong with your business. Um, turn on these lights. Oh yeah. 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 They um, shut off. my little man. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So, so yeah, like, you know, I would tell my, uh, I would tell my, um, you know, my students, like, dude, don't fucking, uh, you know, don't focus too much on the following. Focus on the business. Yeah. Everything else is going to come afterwards. But now, like, you know, I just hit 10K, but for me, I kind of expected it because I knew, like, my views on barbering were going to be, like, either people were going to, like, strongly agree with my opinion and how I said shit. Yeah. Like, when I talked about, like, having, like, the cluttered service list, mm -hmm. I knew people were going to be, like, Oh, if you don't offer all these fucking other services, just yeah. say you suck. Yeah. You know, you suck as a barber. And I'm like, Oh, you know what? Uh, the one video you were talking about, like booth rent to like commission or something like that. Oh, don't open up a barbershop. I was yeah, telling people not to open up a barbershop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
dude, and people were just people like, like people were like disagreeing, like, and I saw you like responding to all. Like for me, like I can't respond to all this shit. This so, show gave me so much fucking anxiety, bro. So, so, I'm like, so, fuck this. So dude. when I resp- so one thing I do is I, I block out all the negative, man. I like yeah. to just put on my blinders. Yeah. And what I do is I just use it as engagement. Because if you don't respond, yeah, then it's like, why the fuck did you make yeah. the video? Uh huh. You know what? No, you, you know, yeah. so so it's an engagement reason to yeah. like. And I tell people, dude, like respond to them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But. Don't fucking respond like a jet. Like, you're not going to win an argument. There's yeah. no way yeah, I'm going to yeah, fucking yeah. tell a dude who's been owning a shop for 10 or 15 years. Yeah. He's dumb for owning a yeah, shop. Yeah. There's no way I'm going to change his fucking <laughs> mind. But what I can do is keep an engaging conversation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And but that's what, you know. Is there any, like, like comments when you read them? Or let's say you put your phone down and you're cutting hair. You're like, oh, fuck this guy. Dude, okay. So, <laughs> so, 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 fuck, man. I, I honestly, like, so. I, That's why we, I hate we, fucking yeah, comments. We, this we shit can, fucks up my day, bro. Bro, I can sit there and just be like, yeah, nothing bothers me. But, I'll, like, I had one dude, like, he made a comment. He was like, oh, man, there's certain things will fucking tick me. And it's funny that I'm going to say it right now. It's funny I'm going to say it right now. But, like. People will be like, oh, this dude's an old head. They'll call me old. Yeah. They'll be like, this dude's a fucking old head. Like when I was talking about, you know, just sticking with Barbary. Yeah. Like, he's an old head. He can't keep up with the times. And I want to yeah. be like, bitch, I've only been cutting hair for three years. I'm just an old fucking person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you fucking, like, I'm not, I'm not even fucking old. I'm 33. I'm still fucking young. You're 33? You know? Yeah, I'm 33. I'm 33, bro. So, yeah. And, and that's why I'm like, people think I'm like fucking old as fuck. <laughs> so I'm just like, bitch, I'm fucking young. Like, to me, 33 is young. What's but the, your birthday? December 15th, 1990. Okay. So I just turned 33. Oh, but nice. dude, people, look, people look at me and they think like I'm fucking old because yeah. fucking the Marine Corps aged me like yeah, a goddamn no, dog. Sure, dude. Yeah. So then they're like, oh, this fucking old guy's talking. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, boy, like I bench fucking like 405 pounds. I fucking deadlift like fucking 580. Like, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, fucking, I'm not fucking old, bro. Like I fucking go to the gym. I fuck, you know what I'm saying? And they're like, I'm not old. Yeah, what? dude. I'm not old, too. Yeah, and they're like, I'll work Come, people always oh, got that old man strength. I'm like, I'm not fucking old, bitch. Like, or like, uh, you know, you know, people say that shit. It'll fucking get to me, like, especially like in the Marine Corps, because dude, that shit aged you. Yeah, no. So, like, I was a sergeant. I mean, I bro, a- you're fucking bald already. Yeah, that's the thing. Oh my god, people were like, oh, I never trust a bald barber. And I was oh. like, fuck you, bro. I'm like, just go, f- like, because you can't say shit to that. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to fucking argue with you? Like, I'm going to lose. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a losing argument. Like, I'm going to constantly. There's, there's some truth in that, you know? Yeah, like, what, I, I got to fucking, gr- I got to give myself. So, honestly, I was growing my fucking hair out. Because I'm like, bro, I'm telling you, in four yeah, I months, got hair, motherfucker. In four hair. months, I'm going to make a video and be like, y'all have something to say. You fucking see this shit. I'm going to pull this up. You fucking see, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, go, because I can grow fucking hair. So I was like, all right, motherfuckers. Like, you guys got something to say? Like, cool, I got you. So, but, but like, shit like that, because I don't, I don't really let shit get to me. I'm like, yeah. dude, like, it's, especially like as a drill instructor, bro. Like, yeah. dude, I've heard recruits say the wildest shit. Yeah. I've like, if, if you've ever been a drill instructor or like you, you were a recruit, yeah. you know, after lights, them little shits have the most to say. Yeah. They're fucking jumping from rack to rack, going to hang out with their oh, buddies. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, fuck it. And then the thing is they won't use rank. They're just like, yeah, Mendoza's a fucking dumbass. Like, he didn't see me fucking take cha- like fucking peanut butter from the chow hall. And I'm like, <laughs> bitch, like, you know you're going to fucking pay for that, right? Because like, I would walk around in skivvies because that's what they wear at night. You know what I'm saying? Oh. So what I would do is I would fucking, like, you know, just put on skivvy shorts and my yeah. fucking go-fasters and shit. Okay. And that's how I'd work Firewatch at, like, fucking 10 or 11 because mm. that's what them bitches are wearing at night. Yeah. So I would just blend in, you know, and I'd okay. walk behind the racks. And dark and shit. Dude, and they just thought I was another recruit. Like, fucking these bitches would be, like, around their fucking, like, Dude, I remember one 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 platoon. <laughs> these motherfuckers they made playing cards, bro. Oh no! And they way. would play fucking twenty one. They would oh, play wow. blackjack. Yeah. And fucking, I like you know, dude. I I was like, dude, I could see them in the back and at front post. I was I seen front post see me. Did they have like their their foot lockers pulled out and shit? No, no, no. So what they did was they were surrounding a rack like way in the back. So okay. We had a platoon of like one hundred and ten recruits. So there was middle wow. racks. Wow. So there was center racks and then there was a the side ones and oh, fucking. Oh damn. Um, Dude, these fucking little bitches, bro, they fucking made playing cards. 
And I don't know if they were gambling like cliff bars or what the fuck, but they were all like very like engaged into it. So mm. I knew there was something going on. Yeah. And when I stepped out that when I stepped on deck, the first thing I seen was fucking the rover. He like about face. Like he was like, you know, this like he was yeah. the lookout. Yeah. And I was like, no bitch. And like he looked, I was like, yeah. I was like, you know, it was like a fucking cartoon, bro. You know, I'm in the fucking duty hut. I just fucking grab him, yank him in, you know, fucking he goes flying in, glow belt flying off. So I was like, fuck no. I pulled him in. I was like, yeah, you're the fucking lookout, huh? He was like, the security doesn't know. The security doesn't know. You know, I was like, yeah. I was like, you fucking stand here, position of attention, fucking hold the door. So I fucking, you know, change over. I put on fucking skeevy shorts. I put on a green shirt instead of the blue kilo yeah. shirt, you know? And I fucking throw on my fucking, my uh, go fasters and shit. Yeah. And I just start walking behind the racks. Yeah. And I'm just walking back. Dude, and these motherfuckers, they got their, dude, recruits are like, Fucking little pieces of shit, bro. <laughs> they know all the little fucking secrets. So they got the red and the blue boom boy. So okay. they don't have fucking, they're not drawing attention and shit. Okay. And, uh, bro, they're playing fucking cards. Yeah. And I'm just like, hey, what, what are you guys doing? And, bro, this, <laughs> hey, this bitch fucking is like, get out of here. <laughs> hey, bro, he was, hey, he fucking, hey, he waved me away, dog. He was like, yeah, so I'm like, what the fuck like i was i was you know I, i'm trying to like stay in character but like i creep up i was like what are you guys doing he's like hey, get the fuck ladies get out of here get out of here i was like bitch like are you serious and then as soon as i heard my voice i was like yeah how about that shit motherfuckers you know and they all just bro like they fucking were like roaches but the ones next to me bro they fucking stood all of them snapped <laughs> bro, they all fucking locked their bodies and shit. And I was like, yeah, bitch. Like, you think I'm fucking, st you think I was a fucking recruit, huh? Like, I fucking, I look like you, huh, bitch? And they're like, no, no, sir. No, I was like, yeah, wait till fucking lights, bitch. Sleep with your go fast. It's on your fucking chest. Bro, the kid fucking waved me off, dude. Like, he fucking pushed me away. I was like, right there? Because I was going to fucking, like, just try and, like, weasel my yeah. Bro, this motherfucker, like, pushed me. He's like, hey, back up, mother. You know, I was. So I, yeah, I fucking snapped on him, dog. I fucking, and, and That's sure enough, hilarious. a few of them, they all fucking skedaddled and shit, you know? <laughs> fucking the three of them that were like in the fucking, like, yeah. right, they were our reach. They, they were fucked. They fucking snapped, locked their bodies. I was like, what the fuck are we doing here? And then this group doesn't know, sir. Of course you don't know, bitch. Like, now all of a sudden, you ain't got for you guys aren't fucking gambling. You guys aren't playing cards. These fucking shits, huh? Like, I, I fucking gave you those that fucking receiving, huh? No, sir. No, sir. I was like, yeah, all you motherfuckers, like, Bro, I got in the middle of the fight. I was like, all you bitches, like, anyone that was over here, I was like, you better have your go fastest on your chest because you're appointed place of duty as soon as lights fucking hits. I was like, you're getting fucking waxed, bro. Like, all you on the fucking quarter deck. Like, I'm going to fucking chalk you bitches. Like, you're fucking dead, bro. Yeah. Because I was just going to try and, like, you know, catch them up. You know, yeah. just be like, hey, like, you, you guys, I was going to put them on fire watch because back then we used to do two hours of fire watch. Oh, okay. So I was going to be like, hey, what the fuck's going on? Like, good. Now all you guys got two hours of fire watch, you know? Yeah. But this motherfucker, like, fucking pushed me away. He was like, hey, get out of here, you know? <laughs> okay, bitch. Like, you guys really are stupid. And the rest of them were like, he's going to, he's going to give us away you know like i was like yeah party's over motherfuckers <laughs> oh fuck but yeah shit like that you know so i was just like fucking bitch dude recruits man like that's you know shit like that it kind of made it worth it yeah you know, it was stuff like that you remember forever bro like i'll never forget that shit it's just it's just dumb dumb shit you know like that's why i i enjoyed what i did i say i said being the a jewel shutter is like the most fun I would never want to repeat. Yeah. That's the only way I can explain that job. It's like the most fun I would never want to repeat. Yeah. Because like all of my friends, dude, like that were DIs. You get, you're get you going to get hissed at twice, man. It's guaranteed. Nobody wants to do those billets. Yeah. Nobody fucking like. What do you mean uh, hissed at twice? So like when you go back to the fleet, yeah, bro, you're going to get sent back to uh, SDA again. Oh, you're as, not, oh, you're, as like a, you, you'll go as a prior. So like you'll so if you were a recruiter mm -hmm. and you went recruiting, like some people go early within their first their, their second enlistment. Yeah. So you got to think, dude. You just pick up sergeant a year later, you get hissed. Yeah. So you go do your recruiting duty. You uh -huh. go do your DI billet. You go do whatever like SDA. Yeah. Now you go back to the fleet. You still have another ten years left in the Marine Corps. Okay, okay, that's it, bro. Mean. Yeah, your ass is gonna go back as a prior. Or you're gonna go recruiting. Like the Marine Corps is gonna fucking get some kind of fucking like training out of you. So, you know, what I'm saying? You know recruiters that have done it <laughs> twice? Yeah. Uh one of my oh. so 
I know drone instructors that have gone back twice. Like yeah, I have, yeah. So like my buddy, uh, like as like a fucking drone shutter, drone shutter. Uh, or so, are, are are they training drone shutters? Oh, so so what they'll do is like sometimes like for instance, um, my uh, he was my senior, like okay. my second to last cycle. Uh, Staff Sergeant Gunny Fernandez. Okay. Fucking bad motherfucker, dude. Like this guy was like, yeah. he was like the drill instructor of drill instructors. He can okay. fucking teach practice like a fucking like yeah. an autistic child. Like okay. I swear to God, like this yeah. guy could teach anybody anything. So. He um he went back and what they did because of like you know he he reached uh, I think he was a chief or like he was a senior and then he went on quota to like the battalion the company or whatever yeah um when he came back dude he already had like he already had the understanding he already had the maturity they just put him in a, they made him do like two senior cycles he did like a chief cycle and then he just went back to like support battalion you know okay. what I'm saying so they're not gonna fucking slay you okay okay but they're gonna put you back there and they're gonna you know you're gonna work. Yeah, like another one of my Marines, Segovia. Uh, uh, he wasn't my Marine. He he was a Marine that like he uh, he trained me okay. when I when I went to be a DI. Uh, when I went to be a drill instructor, he uh, you know kind of introduced me to Kilo Company. This and it, it fucking sucked, dude. Like a lot of the camaraderie comes from the suck. Yeah. So like he was one of those sure. dudes. Like yeah. you know I'm a senior drill instructor. You're a green belt. Why the fuck are you talking to me? Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if you're not fucking running and screaming, like why are you fucking like standing here? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But. He developed, you know, he he was a he was a marine that took me under his wing. Yeah, and he was like, bro, like you gotta fucking do this. If you don't want to be in the spotlight, this is what you do. If you want to fucking, you know, really stand out and be a good drill instructor, this, you know, he was one of those. He was a mentor. Yeah, you know, uh, Segovia really fucking set like a good example of like um, a leader. And he went back to the he went back at his second tour, and it's funny because all the marines were like, oh man, he's such a good guy. Like he's fucking. A badass fucking dude, and I'm just like Segovia. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. They're like, yeah. He came back. He was like a a, a senior drill instructor. He was like a chief, or I forget what bill. He didn't go back to being a green belt, you know, because he already hit those billets. Mm -hmm. So when you go back on a second time, you pick up kind of where you left off, I guess. Mm -hmm. It just depends on like you know what kind of like you know um, character you are. I I'm assuming because I never went back again. But a lot of the guys that were seniors or J or chiefs, they came back. They did seniors. They went to chiefs, and then they kind of like went through different like routes you know kind of like furthering their yeah. drill instructor career uh -huh. but it, it was funny man like a lot of the guys were like yeah this guy's cool as fuck like he's fucking teaching that blah blah and i'm just like segovia like this motherfucker used to haze me like <laughs> like like when he was in the duty hut i was in a lot of the duty hut you yeah. know what I'm saying? oh no dude he's like fucking training he's teaching us he's he's super fucking chill and i'm just like you know you just see like a whole nother per you yeah. hear something like that and i'm just like wow <laughs> like and I'm just like, hey Zagobia, how's it going as a DI? He's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like I, I hear the I hear the fucking hats love you. He's like, oh, you're a great guy. Yeah. He's like, I got a, he, I mean, dude, I got a solid ass team. I'm like, I bet the fuck you do, asshole. <laughs> Click the fucking phone. I was like, yeah. <laughs> don't ever come sit in my fucking Boy, chair again. Fucking you know, yeah. I'm die, pushing your fucking hairline back next time you get haircut. You fucking. <laughs> but no, nah, he was cool. He was he was another marine that like supported me when I was cutting hair, man. Like yeah. even when I got out. He wasn't one of those like fucking assholes, man. Yeah. When I got out, he was like, "Hey, bro, like, you need help?" I was like, "Yeah, cool. We come to my spot, or I will go to his and let me cut his hair." Yeah. You know, like that's the kind of man he was. Mm. You know, so you'll go back. Sometimes they go back as a second tour, and they, uh, you know, they pick up kind of where they left off. Okay. So it's not like they're getting fucking slayed again. You don't just start over. Yeah. You go back and you kind of just pick up where you left off. You know. It, your time in the DI field. <clears throat> were there any drill shutters who like? Committed suicide or anything like that? Um, shit, dude, there was. Fuck. Um, so suicide was kind of a thing. Like, I remember Marines used to, like, dude, they would try and, like, get hurt so they wouldn't have to go on the boys. They would try and have, like, medical issues so they wouldn't have to train the recruits. Okay. Because, dude, that shit was fucking, like, you know, that was, um, it was demanding, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, I don't for care sure. what, and, and it's so funny, man, like, from fucking 1987 to fucking 2024, everyone before you or everyone before you had it harder. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, oh, back when I was a fucking hat, we used uh, to fucking you know low crawl through fucking spikes and fucking broken glass and shit to get our fucking campaign covers. Like, yeah, no, fuck, dude, it's not. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, it's it's hard no matter who you are. It's a demanding job. Um, as far as suicide, like. I've had Marines, you know, who they went through their problems and stuff like that. They've, you know, they, they faced their, they had pretty hard times. Mm -hmm. You know, they had to make those, like, fucking decisions to, like, change their life. And, um, you know, when I was getting out, um, 
one thing that touches with me was um, <clears throat> I had this gunnery sergeant Armstrong, and um, I was a pool chief. Well, I was I was going to be the pool chief, and I was working at the pool. I was a McQuiss, and um, dude, I um, this is going to get a little fucking deep here. Okay. But um, we all knew where my career was headed. Okay. And you know, <clears throat> when you're in the Marines, man, when you get that fucking fear of like losing everything yeah no. that's your safety net mm -hmm. you know For and sure. um i was not only losing everything but i was losing my wife mm -hmm. i was losing my son um it fucking sucked dude my parents knew me my my fam i had a really i have a really strong supportive family yeah and to tell my mom and dad that i was going through this dude it was like shameful because yeah. my parents would brag about me man like For they sure. were those parents that yeah. were like my son's not a Marine. He's the fucking drill instructor. Yeah. My son is the color sergeant. Like when I was in my old unit at Mouse 11, like, yeah. dude, I was the color sergeant. So I used to do all the events at Petco Park. I used to carry the American oh. flag for like oh. the Chargers games. Okay, okay. I was like, you know, I had the dude. Um, you had this whole image. Yeah, man. And, and um, fuck, dude, my sergeant major was such a bad. I had Sergeant Major Hall and um, fuck. I gotta find his name. I have to fucking put his name out here, dude. Fucking. Uh, Let me just check the. Uh, oh, I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna say, do you have like a charger or something? You need to put it on. So, uh, <clears throat> so when I was when I was a sergeant at um my was in my old unit, dude. I had Sergeant Major Hall. And that guy was like a straight fucking like he reminded me of like uh Hank Hill. He was just a real straight shooter. Okay. He was like an all American dude. All right. Fucking he had like the high and tight, but he was like just a straight shooter. He made me his color, so I was like his right hand man. All right. And then Sergeant Major Fogarty, he took over. Sergeant Major Fogarty, dude, even after I was a drill instructor, even after I lost everything, that dude was coming to get his fucking he got out of the Marine Corps and he was coming to me to do his beard. Nice. That's like the kind of like impact that like these Marines had on me and I had on them. Yeah. That we all had that genuine fucking like network of, you know, friend. We had that camaraderie. We had that friendship. We had that trust. And, um, dude, like I was a color sergeant. They sent me on the fleet week up in fucking uh, San Francisco. So mm. I carried the American oh, flag on the what? fucking USS America yeah. in 2014. And we went under the fucking Golden Gate Bridge while the fucking Blue Angels flew over. Yeah, dude. that was when the fucking um when the uh, the Giants won the World Series. And okay. we were there for it, bro. Nice. I fucking had two of my lance corporals at a bar. Yeah, bro. These people came up with tickets and gave them to us, and we weren't supposed to go. And yeah. I was, I told those lance corporals, I was like, "You motherfuckers, you're stupid if you don't." Yeah. I was like, "Here, you guys won't have to pay for it. I will." And I fucking gave them the tickets, bro. Yeah. And those motherfuckers watched the Giants win the World Series. Wow. Yeah, it was fucking sick, dude. And um, Sergeant Major Fogarty, he was the one that hooked me up with that. You know, nice. he put me on there. He had me doing, like, the retirements. Like, dude, like, fucking, basically, like, I was set up for success in the Marine Corps by my leadership. Yeah. And I, you know, I had a good thing going with it for me. You know, I fucking was, like, you know, I wasn't, like, no fucking poster Marine, but I was, like, the fucking, you know, I had a good, yeah, like, a good support system. I was on a good path. I had a good name for myself. I, you know, and to have all that shit taken away, man. Mm. It fucking sucked because, like, dude, like, telling my dad, uh, I was, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be a barber, you know, like, yeah. I, I had a fucking ankle monitor on. Mm. I was like, I'm getting kicked out of the Marine Corps. I'm fucking, you know, I'm losing everything. Yeah. And my dad was like, well, How did you fuck this up? Mm. You know, and <clears throat> the last time they see me, you know, I was graduating DI school. They came out for a couple of my graduations. Like, yeah, they were like that. They're from Ohio. So they were traveling the country to come show me that love, you know. Mm. And then here I am. I just fucked it away. Yeah. And um, I don't think I fuck it away. But after two weeks of fucking it away, I'm on fucking house. You know, I'm going to fucking Vista yeah. County. Yeah. I'm over here acting like a fucking idiot. Yeah. And uh, but before all that, um. I was kind of restricted to base, yeah. and I used to sleep where the pool was. Okay. And, um, dude, like, you know, as a drill instructor, you, you, like, I'm so glad I didn't let that, like, engulf me. Mm. I didn't let being a fucking DI, like, completely, like, you know, take over. But, dude, I had my fucking mixed feelings, and I was a, uh, I was a, uh, what do you call that, like, a, a, a hearse, where you'd, like, I, I was trained mm. to do the, uh, the rappel tower. Okay. So I used to fucking help the recruits on the tower. I would 
teach the not, the not okay, tying classes. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, so I went through that course to do the rappel tower. And I remember, dude, I made a fucking noose. And I was, I, we, I had access because I knew that there's a, there's like a little passcode to get into the pool. Mm -hmm. And I remember I drove to the pool at like 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. And I typed in the code. I pulled the key out, unlocked, and I went in there. And um, I was just like, everything was dark. And I was like, dude, like, I don't want to fucking do this anymore. And um, thank God I was fucking tired, man. I was, I was awake, man. I couldn't sleep for like three days straight. Yeah. With all the stress <clears throat> going on. And I remember um, I took one of the, they, we had these lines like the fucking the rope the, that goes in the water that you use to tie to like the fucking buoys. Mm -hmm. I took one of those and I made a noose with it. And I remember I Googled like, how does, uh, how long does it take for someone to fucking die from hanging? Yeah. And f what I learned was it takes like 13 minutes. <sighs> so what happens is, is like most people just snap their neck. Okay. And the weight of their body like snaps their neck. And they usually suffocate and they fucking die that way. Mm -hmm. But your body's still alive. You just, you're just brain dead for 13 minutes. So mm -hmm. while you're hanging there, you're not fully dead. Obviously, yeah. your brain isn't fucking working. Yeah. And I remember just thinking about it. Like, okay, I'm going to go up to the fucking, to the high dive, you know, the, the tower. I was going to mount the fucking, the knot around it, mm -hmm. sit on the edge and just drop myself in the pool. And, um... I was in the chief's office and I fell asleep. Mm. And when I woke up, there was Gunny, Gunner Sergeant Armstrong. I remember he woke me up and I am so fucking thankful that it was him because he was chill as fuck, man. Yeah. He nudged me. He woke me up. And I remember I was like, what the fuck? Like, cause I was just so sad, man. And, uh, he was like, you had a long night. What the fuck? Like, you know, I'm like coming away. Yeah. And um, I was like, dude, what? Like, yeah, man. And he was holding the noose. Mm. And he was like, dude, do you want to talk? And I mm. was like, uh, you know what I'm going through, man. Yeah. And he was like, well, you know, if you ever need anything, I'm here for you. Yeah. And he was like, um, I, want, I want to make sure you're good. Yeah. And um, there was another gunner sergeant, gunner sergeant Preble. Yeah. He still checks up on me, man. Um, cool as fuck, Gunny, Gunny Preble. Um, Armstrong told Preble, and what they did was they were like, dude, you know, we're not going to report this yeah. because they knew it would just make the city. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, you, yeah. In the military, you can't really fucking. So they trusted me to not do something stupid to myself, which I'm glad they did because, yeah. you know, like we had a good communication system. We had like a good, like, you know, trust. Yeah. And I promised them, I was like, it was, it was just a long night, man. Yeah. I was like, I was just thinking about everything and I didn't want to do this. And, um, you know, I was like, honestly, I just, you know, I just, it just seemed like the easiest way out of everything. Yeah. And they were just like, man, like, you don't understand what you're doing, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I understood and we talked about it and, um, dude, it was, it was as much as it sucked making my exit. Yeah. It felt good to know that I have those guys to keep me from, <clears throat> you know, they were looking out for my best interest. Yeah. They kept me like under their wing. They didn't judge me for what I was going through. They didn't, you know, which, which most of the time when you hear Marines getting DUIs, they get like fucking shunned from their unit. Yeah. You hear it all the time. Like mm -hmm. if you ever were in a unit and you were just a regular Marine, but you heard of like the dude who's getting NJP'd, all you think about him is he's trash. Yeah, he's a shit bag. And everybody calls shit. him a shit bag. Mm -hmm. Everybody. That's your reputation. <clears throat> to no matter who you are. you get out. And um, <clears throat> I never got treated that way. I had fucking Marines who like knew my whole situation. And dude, they supported me. That's and that's awesome. how, that's the one thing that I, I feel like, um, that's the one thing I feel like that drove me. Was yeah. um, when I was in my apartment, man, having my first sergeant, even my, uh, my OIC, Captain Donovan. Yeah. Uh, major Donovan. I don't know if he's if he's a major. I'm uh, I'm pretty sure he's a major now, dude. Before he deployed to uh, um, he went over to the Middle East. He came and got his haircut. Yeah. Like having dude from my company commander, my company commanders, 
series commanders, junior marines, yeah, like fucking peers, subordinates, like all of them in my corner after getting kicked out. Yeah. It fucking pushed me. You know, yeah. it was like, dude, you're doing something right. You did something right. Mm -hmm. You weren't a shitbag. It kind of validated, like, it, 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 as bad as it sounds, it kind of validated me as a man. Because <sighs> it let me know that I wasn't just someone who existed. Yeah. That they actually gave a fuck. Yeah. Which you don't see that too often. No, no you don't. You see Marines get out, and then they're just isolated. Mm -hmm. They're alone. Mm -hmm. And, dude, I was fearing that so much. But to know that I had those guys in my corner, it was like, holy shit. Yeah. Dude, like, like just love. Yeah, man. Because you think like you don't you don't realize the the, yeah. the the realness. Because when someone's like, you hear it all the time. Hey, man, if you ever need anything, I got you. Yeah. And then what happens when you message them? Hey, bro, like what, what what's going on, man? Hey, like and you kind of need that person. Yeah. Or you want to reach out to them and they're like, oh, dude, I'm busy, blah, blah I can't help. Mm. Dude, anytime I was like, hey, like I'm cutting hair, dude. These guys were like, what can we do to help you? You know what I'm saying? And yeah. they followed through with it. Yeah. It, 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 dude, it fucking meant the world. And it's like, uh, I feel like that's kind of what drove me. And I tell people, like, that's where your success should come from. Not from, like, yourself. From the people around you. Don't just do it for you. Do it for the people that support you. Yeah. Because these <laughs> people see something in you that you don't see. Make yourself fucking see it so that they have a reason that they're supporting you. Give them that fucking reason to keep supporting you. You know what I'm saying? You, you shouldn't want to win to have the fucking nice car, the money, the fucking shit. That's all, that's all just a extra. When you're fucking winning, when you're fucking doing great, when you're fucking accelerating in, in your growth, when you're fucking like growing in life and you're fucking elevating every, every aspect of life, you're not just doing it for you. You're doing it for the people that are supporting you. Mm -hmm. The people that are fucking telling you, hey, man, I'm going to come get a haircut with you every fucking week because they want you to grow. They want you to win. That's why they're fucking supporting you. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not just for you. It's for, you know, the people that are giving you that support. Yeah. Show them the results of their fucking support. You know what I'm saying? Like the most disrespectful thing you can do is fucking give up. And that's not disrespectful to yourself. It's disrespectful to the people that are cheering you on. Mm -hmm. It's disrespectful to your fucking family and your kids because they're watching you. It's disrespectful yeah. to your fucking spouse who's dealing with you working fucking 12-hour shifts and having nothing to show for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The most disrespectful thing you can do is not grow. Yeah. You know, it's not just disrespectful to yourself, but to those around you watching. You know, and that's kind of where, like, I was, like, you know, mentally at. And thankfully, I had those people watching me. I had those people supporting me. I had the people coming through because... I was like, if I fucking lose, that's disrespectful to all these people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's like, you know, that was like a driving factor to my fucking growth. Yeah. And, and that's one thing, like, when I hear barbers, man, I, I look at it like this. <clears throat> you probably heard it before. Barbers who want to be there for their community. Barbers who are there for the people. They'll be like, dude, I grew up in this poor city and fucking like, you know, in, 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 a, in a poor neighborhood. And I'm going to be the best barber and I'm going to charge fucking cheap prices and I'm going to hook everybody up. Well, dude, you're charging fucking 20 bucks a cut. You've been doing this for five or six years. Oh, I'm taking care of my people. I'm taking care of my people. Well, what do you have to show for it? You're, you're broke. You're living paycheck to paycheck. You're living cut to cut. What do you have to show for it? You know, and they're like, dude, I'm doing it for my people. You want to do something for your people? Show them you can fucking grow. Show them you can come from a community where they came from and you can fucking scale your business and you can fucking get out of that fucking situation. You're sh showing them a way out. Mm. You're showing, you're, yeah, you're going up from fucking 20, 40, 60, 80 a cut. Oh, that's disrespectful to my clients to charge 80 bucks a cut when I've been charging them 20 this long. No, it's disrespectful to them by not showing them you can fucking grow. It's disrespectful to your family by not having anything to put on the fucking table. It's disrespectful to your kids to make them think that it's okay to stay where you're at for those fucking years. You have to fucking grow. Mm -hmm. It's fucking disrespectful to everybody around you to just be fucking handing out free work, breaking your fucking back and having nothing to show for it. You have to be able to fill your own cup to be able to pour into other people's cups. And that's like, you know, like, like a, a metaphorically, you have to show them they can, you can be successful from this little small town that you can be successful from this fucking bad, bad environment that you came from and you can outgrow it. 
you're opening doors and opportunities for kids watching you for the younger generation before you to let them know you can fucking do it. Yeah. You're not doing, you're not, you're not fucking helping anybody out by giving them fucking handouts. You're helping them out by setting an example and creating a roadmap because once you know how to do it, what can you do? You can teach them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And teaching someone how to fucking eat is more valuable than just putting food on their fucking table. You know what I'm saying? When you teach a man to fish, yeah. he's going to fucking eat for the rest of his life. Like that's, that's the way I see this shit. <clears throat> My bad. I got a little <laughs> fucking deep that there. That was man. awesome, dude. <laughs> I, I got a little deep there, but yeah, that's the way I see thing. it, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's like that you know. Awesome, dude. But you know what? Real quick, just tell everybody um, where they can find you if you want to just promote yourself real quick. Yeah, man. Lucky cut it. Lucky underscore cut dot it on Instagram, TikTok. I don't really use TikTok much. Um, you know, anytime, dude. I'm fucking you know here with the Barracks Barber man. Like fucking. Reach out to me. You're looking to scale your business. You're looking to fucking grow or need advice or tips. Hit me up. I'm here. That's my fucking goal in life is to help barbers. Right on. I appreciate oh, you. Hell yeah, man. Through, I appreciate you. Yeah, this dude. was fucking dope, man. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I'm giving you your